on baseball. At City Field in New York, the New York Mets play the St. Louis Cardinals. Tonight's special broadcast from the promenade is brought to you by the New York Lottery. New York Mets baseball on SNY is brought to you by Cash for Life from the New York Lottery. You can win $1,000 a day for life. By Geico, over 75 years of savings and service. And by Cadillac, visit CadillacTriState.com for exceptional offers. City Field on a hot summer night. Hazy, hot, and humid in New York. A little refuge in the Jackie Robinson Rotunda. A place to meet your friends. Beautiful view of the evening sky as you make your way to your seats at City Field. Pose in front of Jackie Robinson's number 42 and head on into the ballpark. Next up. And we are in a different part of the ballpark tonight, up in the promenade above our usual broadcast location behind home plate. And a pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to City Field. Gary Cohen, Ron Darling, Keith Hernandez with you tonight as the Mets play the third game of their four-game series against the Cardinals. We had a chance to be up here last year. Beautiful night sky, a chance to really feel the atmosphere of the ballpark. Well, I, I enjoy doing this. Uh, we do it once a year, and I'm glad we're back up here. I like being above and looking down, and it also makes me feel a lot closer to my compatriot here because this is where Gary used to sit at Old Shea. So I, I feel togetherness with Gary. Of course, at Shea was a lot higher than it is here. I'm going to boo. I'm going to cheer. I'm going to have a hot dog. I'm going to have a beer. Maybe not a beer. But it's so great to be um, up here because to me, it's the closest thing to, and don't tell our bosses, I can't believe we get paid. I mean, this is kind of like being a fan and going to the game. That's why I love being out. Closest thing we have to a night off That's in right. the ballpark doing the baseball game. When we come back, Ronnie has a terrific sit down with Cardinal veteran starting pitcher Adam Wainwright. It's the Mets and the Cardinals coming up from City Field. Did anyone help you become that kind of leader that you are? I think you learn from watching your elders. Watch by Old Dominion Freight Line. Visit ODFL.com for more information. 
No fees on all Mets tickets now through tomorrow, July 20th. This limited time offer applies to all remaining regular season home games in 2017, including the Cindergard as Thor bobblehead game this Saturday night and the Subway Series in August. A little earlier today, Ronnie had a chance to sit down with Cardinal starter Adam Wainwright, who beat the Mets earlier in this series. Well, thanks, Gary. I really appreciate it. I'm here with Adam Wainwright. You know, Adam, I love watching you pitch, but the days you don't pitch, I might enjoy just as much. Um, you're such a great leader of your staff, um, and it comes so easily to you. Did anyone help you become that kind of leader that you are? I think you learn from watching your elders, watching the guys that came before you, and, and that's the way the tradition has always been here, is there's a guy that was above you that is pouring into you so that that way when you get older you can pour into someone else. And Chris Carpenter was that way with me, and uh, I got to watch Chris and Matt Morris and Woody Williams and Jeff Supon and Jason Marquis and a bunch of really old, not really old, really great veteran players um, come before me and show me the way to do it. And uh, the, the level of professionalism that they held, I try to keep that same uh, quality now. You know, I found with myself as I got a little later in my career, I have this philosophy, I don't know if it's true or not for you, is that you have this great physical ability, blessed with it, then you get this bit, uh, pitching acumen, intelligence about how to pitch. But as you get that, you have that window where they're both together, and then sometimes the, the physical abilities lessen a little bit. Um, how are you evolving as a pitcher, and how are you doing that? Well, that's, that's, that's kind of the path I've been on, really. I mean, uh, as a youngster, I had a lot of raw ability, and it was raw. And I, I knew some things, but I just didn't know how to incorporate them into my game just yet. And then as I got older, I uh, sort of put those two together for a little while. And unfortunately, I had a, I had a Tommy John uh, surgery, and I had an Achilles rupture that were right in the prime of my career that kind of cost me two seasons. But other than that, um, you know, I've, I've had a pretty darn good career for, for – small town kid out of southeast Georgia that you know really um, really I don't think many people where I lived thought I was gonna you know I thought they may, might be a decent college player or something and then even talking to Chris Carpenter and some of the other guys before you know and and I was coming up it was like well he's gonna be okay he's gonna be a decent pitcher he might be a four or five starter and so I feel like you know the lessons I've been taught from, from Chris and from other guys have helped me uh, mentally be better than probably physically I should have been over the years but um, right now you know I'm, I'm in I'm in kind of that pa that pattern where I'm fighting it like crazy but it you know my stuff is starting to has start to go down just a little bit and uh, I made some adjustments in my in my weight training program and the, the way I'm conditioning now uh, I'm trying to do everything I can to get back on top because I really feel like my arm is telling me that it's not over just yet I can get back up on top and have a few more really good years Adam Wainwright, 11 wins already this year. Fascinating guy to listen to. There's more of that interview. We'll have that tomorrow in the final game of this series. Tonight, it's the Mets and Cardinals. Jacob DeGrom on the mound. His first pitch coming up. Sierra in right field. But you can't pitch any better uh, than Jacob DeGrom has of late. You see his Land Rover numbers just off the charts. 141 punch outs, Keith, and 119 innings pitch. That is quite a number. 
1.18 whip. That's where you want to be. Matt Carpenter leads off four hits last night and DeGrom's first pitch of the evening is in for a strike and we're underway. <clears throat> well Carpenter last night had uh, what four base hits first pitch swinging he takes the first pitch tonight change the program. Well his general demeanor is to take the first pitch second of the National League and walks behind his former teammate Joey Votto 386 on base percentage starting the night. And he takes the off speed pitch for a strike and it's 0 and 2. DeGrom six wins in his last six starts. One of those was against the Cardinals maybe the oddest game in the stretch. He gave up four solo home runs in a seven batter span early in the game but the Mets rallied and he got himself a six to four win. And Carpenter fouls one back DeGrom has given up only one lead off home run in his career and it came to Matt Carpenter last season. Well you got to be swinging the bats the home plate umpire. Uh, a young umpire likes to call balls and strikes hunts balls and strikes so hitters swing the bat David Rackley the home plate umpire tonight DeGrom ahead of the leadoff hitter 0 and 2 and Carpenter stays alive on a 96 mile an hour fastball Rackley calling the balls and strikes the veteran Joe West at first Alfonso Marquez and Chad Fairchild rounding out this crew temperature right around 90 degrees. Typical hazy, hot, and humid New York summer day, and we're getting to enjoy every little bit of it outside up in the promenade. Tommy Pham on deck, then Dexter Fowler for the Cardinals. And Carpenter lays off the off speed pitch, and it's one and two. Well, this is where we are. Right up above the first section of the promenade and uh, right in front of the promenade club which is behind us all sorts of good eats in there. We might have a few before the evening's over. Uh, that elevation that we're at right now is not even close to how high we are when we go to D.C. and uh, Pittsburgh also Pittsburgh. This yeah. is a, yeah this is about the same as Pittsburgh maybe a, maybe a tad lower. The new uh, ballpark in Atlanta is pretty high also isn't it. Uh, I've forgotten. I was there the first trip. It's more windy than anything. Yeah, yeah, no fooling. Very little wind tonight. One two coming. And Carpenter lays off the curveball. Quite a turn at bat to start the night. He's already seen seven pitches and still going. Rom's last outing against the Rockies, first game after the All Star break on Friday. He was magnificent, and the Mets got him tons of runs. He went eight, struck out 11. That's won that game 14 to 2. And Carpenter fouls mm. off the changeup and stays alive. Well, these are the kinds of at bats that you want from your leadoff hitter. He's seen every pitch that DeGrom has, which means everyone on the Cardinals bench has seen it too. Changeup up in the strike zone. That's a little delayed reaction to that. The nerve endings weren't uh, working quickly. <laughs> the signal to the brain was a little slow. Synapse delay. <laughs> Pitch number nine coming to Carpenter. And he fouls off the fastball. How frustrating as a starting pitcher is it when you get into this kind of initial at bat? I had a at bat against, not at bat, pitch to the leadoff hitter of Milwaukee Brewers, Pat Listash. Remember him, rookie of the year? Sure. I believe it was 21 pitches. Really? I believe. Leading off the game? Leading off the game. And then he singled. We'll get Dave Freed on that. Maybe I I'm, could be embellishing now that I'm getting older. But you know, when the older you get, the better you're supposed to be. I'm going the opposite way. The older I get, the worse my stories are. <laughs> well, the question is what was your pitch count that day? I mean, 21 put a big crimp in your night. I think I won a little CG uh, with a loss. Really? Yeah. This is pitch number 11 coming to Carpenter. <laughs> and there will be a 12. Wow. We have got a matchup tonight of two of the most athletic pitchers in baseball. DeGrom pitching for the Mets and Mike Leak going for the Cardinals. Guys who can hit and field and run. It's a, it's a pleasure to watch those guys like Wainwright. In the first game here, one of the athletes on the field. It's nice to see. 
Carpenter's reached base in 21 straight games starting the night. And a check swing foul. So he has had every variety of foul ball. 12 pitches down and a 13th to come. What do I want to throw here? How can I put him away? Let's go up and in and make it up and in. Get it in there and upstairs. They're going to go away. In the air to right field. Bruce angling back. And a step out of the warning track. He's got it for the first down of the night. Took 13 pitches, but DeGrom gets his first out. And the Lexus defense for the Metsies, uh, Cespedes Conforto, is going to get the lion's share of the time in center field. On the infield, only change. Wilmer Flores, who's been uh, missing playing time, he gets a start. It's been a while for Wilmer, and uh, Travis is all of a sudden starting pretty much every day back behind the plate. Well, DeGrom will try to make shorter work of the next <laughs> couple of hitters. Tommy Pham, three for eight in this series, including a three run homer on Monday night. And Pham takes the curveball down for ball one. Now last night I said we all said right from the start that Michael Walker was throwing bullets the Grom not so much so far coming out of the, coming into the game. 95 on that fastball up and out of the zone it's 2 and 0. Reyes behind the bag. And the off balance throw gets fan for the second out. Well, that's a big sigh of relief for DeGrom right there after all the shenanigans on the Mets infield early in the game last night. One play and one clean play. Well, I also think that Jose had two throws in the dirt last night and uh, kind of raised some eyebrows whether he's lost a little bit of that arm to me to see him throw that bullet around two feet out in the outfield grass. And right on the button, it's a good sign. I'm sure he's more determined. You make adjustments. So now Dexter Fowler with two out and nobody on. Fowler two for nine in this series. And takes the fastball off the plate. Fowler was one of the four Cardinals who homered against DeGrom in that game in St. Louis right before the All-Star break. Yes, he led off the fourth with the solo shot. I know this is not scientific but it's something that I've always seemed to witness when your race is on the mound your team seems to play a little more buttoned up. Well to wit. The Mets have had 35 under and runs against them this year only two with DeGrom on the mound. And he falls behind Fowler three and with Jed Jerko on deck. Cespedes playing a little bit shallow in uh, left field. He got burned last night in a ball over his head, a ball that short hopped the wall in left field. But he likes to play a shallow left. There was that ball Carpenter hit in the second inning last night. Fowler taking ball four, so a two out walk, and the Cardinals have their first base runner of the night. Rom walked only one in his last drive. This is interesting. Dan Warren wow. going to the mound after a two out walk in the first inning. He doesn't look right. Uh, I said before he's not thrown, like I said walk was throwing bullets. There's something unusual about the way he's delivering the baseball and maybe Worthen is re uh, reminding him of that. Well he got out of whack earlier this year. He had those back to back starts where he got cuffed around against Texas and Milwaukee and I wonder whether there's some reminder that Dan needed to pass along or whether there's an area of concern. You know we showed earlier uh, in the year and I know our truck will be right on top of it how his glove hand was flying open when he delivered the baseball. So track it guys see if he keeps his glove tucked against his midsection or his side is oblique. That's when he's most effective. So here is Jerko two for nine in this series Fowler at first with two out. That fastball catches the corner. Watch his glove. Does it stay right against his side when he delivers it? No, it's flying open. So that glove is away from his body. You want it kind of tucked into your side. That that way you keep your mechanics very tight. 
So are you saying that when the glove flies open there's the possibility the shoulder might follow what what happens is that you end up with a real circular motion as you're delivering the baseball. This is the last pitch He's a little better with the glove where it comes to his side see how he tucks it in. Uh, you you have your body motion in a circular motion as opposed to a straight line right best way to throw to home plate it's a straight line. He's ahead on Jerko 0 and 2. Well, the last six stars coming off those two dreadful outings in a row. The Rom has never been better. He's gone at least seven innings in each of those starts. Last mid pitcher to go seven plus innings, seven straight starts. Jacob DeGrom two years ago you learn something every year he went through a real tough two starts like he's never had and he fought through it and on a great run lesson learned 24th pitch of the inning and Jerko fouls it off slider I would say that one of the players on this team that is most respected by not only his teammates but his coaching staff. He's a no nonsense kind of guy you don't hear a lot of. Hoopla around DeGrom. All he does is every fifth day he takes the ball and gives you excellence. And Jerko strikes out on the high fastball. And so, whatever it was that Dan Warthin brought with him, DeGrom put it to use. That's come to bat with no score. Flores starts for just the third time this month as T.J. Rivera sits down tonight. A little flip flop. Jay Bruce moves up to the three hole. You went to Cespedes. It's clean up. Trying to get Cespedes going. See the Toyota numbers of Mike Leak. Uh, what he features is about seven different pitches. He will take a little off. He'll sink it. He'll cut it. He'll curve it. He'll slurve it. He'll slice it. He'll do whatever it takes to get you out. It's like a Ginsu knife. <laughs> But he don't like that sinker, and he's uh, not an overpowering pitcher by any stretch of the imagination. And uh, I always like to watch these guys work. That's having faced Leak since he was a Cincinnati Red in 2014. Doing one to Conforto. He's three for eight in this series with a double and a home run. 
Rom cooling his heels after a laborious first inning. It's very neat with that towel. He's sitting on it now. Very nice. Probably pretty easy to sweat through your uniform oh. tonight. Conforto bounces one foul. Ron, did you did you wear a jacket on a hot night when you pitched? I would just uh, drape it over one arm. Okay. Yeah, and just and just hold it there. But um, a lot of times, I would at least change my jersey three times, and we only had two jerseys, so uh, the equipment manager would have to dry the first one as you have the second one on. And on real, real muggy days, sometimes I change my whole uniform. Really? Yeah. Three two coming, and Conforto pops it up. Jerko into foul ground. To the railing and just enough room for the first out. So Conforto retired one away. So if you had to change your jersey three times, I know Doc Gooden was changing it more often. What did what did he do? Doc didn't really change his uniform. He liked going out there with the uh, uh, lathered up, ride it hard and put it away wet kind I mean, of deal. I mean, he sweated a lot. He did. I never, you know, you couldn't help but sweat through your shirt. Yeah. And I never changed my shirt in the course of the game unless it was just really. Unbearable. I, I never saw anyone sweat like Doc during the game. The only guy I can remember who sweated as much as Doc was Jim Bibby. Remember him? Oh, yeah. Texas. Bibby. Guy could hold eight baseballs in his hand. Yeah. Pete Falcone was a sweater. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he was like he took a shower in the first inning after the first pitch. <laughs> That's Dribble Cabrera, one for seven in this series. And he gets jammed and fouls went off, one and one. Oh. Has been holding down second base since uh, the San Francisco series when he objected to the move, but he's done okay there. However, there is a development on the second base front, which is that Neil Walker should be ready to play in rehab games this weekend and might be ready as early as Monday when the Mets get to San Diego to take his position back. Whoa. So then the question is what happens with Cabrera? Toward the middle and a base hit for Cabrera. The first hit tonight. Boy, it's fast infield. It's a little upper elevation here. You get a better view of the ball really whistling through the infield here. Got a little out in front. Took a little off that sinker, but he kept his hands back. It reminds me, Ronnie, of old Wrigley Field back in the old days when the grass was around four inches long. That would have ate up that ball big time. It was a Ryan Sandberg 4-3. That's right. Ryan Sandberg never got his uniform dirty. Never would die for a ball. Well, with that infield grass, he never had to. Right, exactly. And he was quick as a cat. With a strike on Bruce, Jerko will move over to the right side. He won gold gloves, right, Sam? Oh, yes, oh, he did. Yes. Yeah, certainly. What a trade for the for the Cubs, huh? What was that trade? It was Ivan De Jesus going the other way? Bruce hits it in the air to center field. Fowler drifting. Tagging at first Cabrera. He's gonna go. Fowler's throw gets away, and Cabrera arrives safely at second. That's just very uh, lackadaisical play by Fowler. He made a boo-boo last night uh, on, a, on a fly ball that he dropped. He just didn't get in position to throw. Had plenty of time on a high fly ball, and Cabrera catches him napping. This should never happen. Cabrera sees him drifting, and he said, "Okay." Whenever I see this play, I'm reminded of the first spring training. Cabrera hurt his knee on that exact same play. I'm reminded of the play in the All-Star game when Mookie Betts threw out Nolan Arenado oh. by about 10 feet on that play. Here's Cespedes with two out and a runner at second. By the way, speaking of Arenado today, five for five, three home runs, seven RBIs, Rockies 18, Padres four. Well, oh, back in the friendly confines. Mm -hmm. well, he is a great, great player. We'll see him again on the next road trip at Coors Field. Cespedes takes a slider off the plate and it's one on one. Cespedes has gone 62 at bats since his last home run. Came June 23rd in San Francisco, so that's nearly four weeks ago. He's 
one for nine in this series. He's got Cabrera at second with two down. Mike Leak now 29 years old. Teammate of Ike Davis's at Arizona State. He's one of the few guys that uh, went straight to the major leagues, yeah. right? He was the last one. Yeah. Um, he was drafted in 09, made his debut in 2010, never pitched in that 09 season. He's never pitched in a minor league game. Mm. Well, you know, when we come to these outdoor venues, there's, yes. there's usually something waiting for us. He, Gary always gets the first choice, by the way. Where's you the, do. Where's the, the first choice? Yeah, he does. Well, that's right. because, I'm, right. and I'm taking the the red one because I already ate up all. They the always leave me the pomegranate, pomegranate, <laughs> and the orange. And where's the grape? <laughs> no more grape. Uh, hey. Is that really pomegranate? It's pomegranate. It's okay. They make pomegranate. Yeah. Tootsie pops. This is orange. Orange, orange. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the court's wide defense. I thought we already did it. The county fan and left Fowler. <laughs> Sierra, who's been impressive in right field. I won't say the first name. Gary, you have it. Carpenter back at first base. Long off the DL at second. Molina behind the plate. You mean Magnaries? Yes. Three and two to Cespedes with Duda on deck. And he gets a breaking ball and fouls it off. Steady diet of breaking balls from Leak so far. And um, he is a, such a good breaking ball hitter. And when you get out in front, you slump, you get out in front, therefore you, you, you get too quick on the breaking ball. But Leak is not giving him anything but steady diet of, oh, there's a sinker. And he gets it through the hole, a base hit. Cabrera being waved around third. Fan's got a good arm. His throw, though, is offline, and Cabrera scores on the base hit by Cespedes. And the Mets take a 1 0 lead. He picked this ball off the ground almost. Oh, not much of a sinker. It was below the strike zone. That's the trouble with a pitcher tries to throw a right hand pitcher, tries to throw a sinker on the outside corner. They use they, they lose a lot of their sink. Their line for their best sinker is to throw it inside corner to a right hand hitter and it sinks more. They have to come more across their body to get that outside corner. It's a much more difficult pitch for them to command. Good aggressive uh, coaching by Sherlock. Just the 21st run batted in of the season for Cespedes. So Terry Collins drops him to the cleanup spot, and he comes through with a two out RBI hit after Cabrera took the extra base. Those are the things that I've seen from the Cardinal series when I watched you guys in St. Louis and here in the first three games that you usually don't see from St. Louis Cardinal teams. Duda drives one of the gap in the left center field. That's going to go all the way back to the wall. Sussman is flying to third. He'll score easily on the double by Duda and it's 2 nothing New York. Cespin is putting it in top gear and scoring from first on the double. Two big two out hits by Sussman and Duda for two early runs. Well you take a sinker ball pitcher the other way. You can't be a left hand hitter and you, uh, you you give it you take what they give you and that's that left center field gap. Cespedes is flying. And he really cuts corners tight. And he's almost wondering if he touched third base did he miss it. I don't think so. But Jerko was supposed to be looking and he wasn't even watching and paying attention. There's Wilmer Flores. Wilmer's had only 13 at bats in the month of July. T.J. Rivera has taken over the third base job. T.J. had a rough night in the field last night and went 0 for 3. So Flores in the lineup today. By the way, the Mets had not seen Leak in three years, but Duda with that double is now seven for nine with two home runs against Mike Leak. So whatever it was, he was successful out a few years ago. He remembered. That's why he was aggressive with Cespedes and went after him with a base open. Wilmer hits one off the middle. That's a base hit. Duda around third. He'll come in to score. Three straight two out RBI hits. Flores cashes a run and it's 3 0 New York.
Hanging slider on a tee right here. Wilmer rips it up the middle. Right down Broadway. Coming into tonight, the Mets have been 0 for their last 26 with runners in scoring position. They're 2 for 2 in the opening inning tonight. And Derek Lilliquist, the Cardinal pitching coach, has been out to talk to Mike Leake. When's the last time I remember pitching coaches from both teams going to the mound in the first inning? That's right. With, with two accomplished pitchers. Well, DeGrom threw 25 pitches in the top of the inning. Now Leake about to throw his 25th pitch in the bottom. Ball got loose in right field and they are retrieving it. Before Jose Reyes steps in. Reyes took an over for last night, but two doubles on Monday night, 11 extra base hits in his last 16 games. Flores at first and two out, and the breaking ball stays outside ball one. When you watch Leak throw, he doesn't use a lot of his back leg or lower body, kind of like throwing darts in there. That's how he pitches. He came into the night sixth in the National League and earned run average, but a lot of that had to do with a great start. His first nine starts of the year, he was at 1.91. His last nine starts, 4.56. And more of that course correction so far tonight. Reyes got well ahead of it and pulled it foul. Pulls one off the glove of Carpenter. Nobody covered first, and everybody's safe. Leak never broke off the mound. So when Carpenter failed to catch the line drive, there was nobody home, and Reyes has himself an infield hit. That's four straight two out hits. Well, we were bragging about what a great athlete Leak was. Nice try by Carpenter, but no help. Just frozen on the mound was Mike Leak. Spectating. That's had three hits all of last night. They have five hits in the first inning tonight. And now the number eight hitter, Travis Darno, with two out and two on. And Travis takes a slider for a strike. Travis 0 for 3 in this series, just three for his last 22. Has seen his average dip to 220. That's had two out. And Cabrera at second, and four straight hits have ensued. And now a grinder down to Jerko, who will get the force at second that ends the inning. But five Mets came to bat, and three scored, providing Jacob DeGrom with a 3 0 lead as we go to the second.
customizable experience with the MLB.com at Bat app. Get New York Mets home screen icons and app features, as well as game day, live game video highlights, radio broadcast, stat cast, news, and more. Download MLB.com at Bat today. Well, the booth is beneath us. Well, I didn't mean it quite that way. The booth is <laughs> below where we are right now. <laughs> and, and we're up here, guys. <laughs> you were right the first time, Gary. Uh, Jacob DeGrom had a rough first inning in that it took him 25 pitches and a visit from Dan Worthen to get through it. But he's got a 3 0 lead as we start the second. Yadier Molina leads off of the Cardinals and he hits the first pitch on the ground to Reyes. Different beginning to this inning than the first one for DeGrom. A 13 pitch at bat for Carpenter in the first, a one pitch at bat for Molina in the second. Well, two things I want you to see consecutive pitches, the first one and then the second one. You can see the glove position. That's the most important. You can see the one on the right is already starting to come up to his side. The one on the left is a little late. The second thing you can look at is look at the, um, the opening between his legs. You can really see how bow legged. Uh, Jacob DeGrom is um, one of the reasons he has such a great foundation. Not the first bow legged pitcher by any means. That's right. So it, 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 can, it can help. Good balance. Let's think of Roger McDowell. Yeah. Paul DeYoung, who was three for three against DeGrom with a home run in St. Louis. That's have cooled him off a little bit in this series at a home run. On Monday night, a double last night, but those were his only two hits intended bats. So that's some progress against the Cardinal rookie shortstop, who's now 11 for 22 against the Mets with nine extra base hits in the five games he's played. Let's take a look at the Quicken Loans rocket arms. Jacob DeGrom fourth in the National League and moving up after his 11 strikeout performance against the Rockies. Kershaw only struck out seven and seven innings yesterday in a one nothing win. Struggled. 15 and two, 2.07 by the way. Curveball and DeYoung lays off. Joe West with the call. One and two. So they went to what? They went to 30 and four. Uh, in the last 34 games, he's 15 and two. Alex Wood is 11 and 0. 11 and 0. Gee. One, two. And the young fouls off the fastball. Well, the NL West is becoming more and more of a one team affair. The Rockies, with their win this afternoon, move to uh, a virtual tie with the Diamondbacks for a second. But Keep in mind that the Rockies had a lead in that division less than a month ago. Yeah. And now the Dodgers are up by ten and a half games. That's what winning 30 of 34 will do for you. Mm -hmm. DeYoung gets under one and pops it up into shallow left. Reyes tracking it. Cespedes is coming in and calls him off. Two out. It is so cool up here to see a pop up. Yep. We can see the ball in the air the entire way. That was awesome. That's see that's why I always tell you when we go to Washington yeah. even though that booth is so high just being able to see the open air and see the ball up in the air makes a huge difference. Well the only difference though is that every pop up never gets as high as we are. Well, that's the but there we have a, a great view of uh, of the Capitol. Down yeah the that's, left field that's line. true. That's true. Here we have a great view of the Whitestone Expressway. Well you can see if you're going to have trouble going home. See now at, at, at Chase Stadium when I used to sit in the upper deck well out beyond center field there was the serval zipper sign right that was that was the, the landmark for those of oh. us who sat up that high pulled down to first by Colton Wong and an easy inning for Jacob DeGrom as he sets down the Cardinals one two three after getting the lead three nothing New York in the second.
Jacob DeGrom leads off the home second against Mike Leake, who gave up three runs and five hits in the first inning. DeGrom with 12 hits this year. No other pitcher has more than eight. And he lines this one into right center, but overcomes Sierra to get it. And that's the first out. The Mets and Marvel Entertainment present Noah Syndergaard as Thor Bobblehead Night this Saturday. When the Mets play the A's, the first 15,000 fans will receive a limited edition collectible. Get tickets at Mets.com slash tickets. And we have Noah as Thor with us in the booth. Very cool. You know, the recommendation I'd make, though, because I don't know if you're asked, Keith, but always ask to sign bobbleheads. It's impossible to sign on the mound because it's just, you know, it's, it's kind of rough. Pulled through the hole, a base hit for Conforto. And the Mets have a one out base runner. They need to put a little strip so he can sign. Easily. Oh, that's smart. Yeah, come on. See, guys. Now, now they consulted Noah on the design of this bobblehead. They should consult you on the general design of bobbleheads. Yeah, well, I mean, what works? But it's, it's pro um, I mean, I'm not a big fan of bobbleheads. This is one of the best ones I've seen. Yeah, that's right? Nice. That's different. You don't get too many pitcher superhero bobbleheads. All right, that's enough. Get that. No. So Conforto has his fourth hit of the series, and here's Cabrera, who singled and scored in the first inning. So I mentioned that DeGrom's got four more hits than any other pitcher in baseball right now. The last Met to outright lead the major leagues in hits, last pitcher to do it, mm. was a guy who you guys always say was not a good hitter. 1989. Coney? David Cohn oh. led the league with 18 Please. hits. Please. I don't know how and he did that. He's Please. the last Met pitcher to lead the league outright in hits. Do me a favor, and I love George. Do not, not ever say that out loud again. <laughs> I mean, come on. Certainly not with him in the room. No. Well, he's in the room. He's listening somewhere. Line the other way. Oh. Nice pickup by Jerko, oh. and he throws it away. Some question about who was going to cover at the bag. De Young was there, but he bailed out. De Wong, who you would have figured was covering, was not in the neighborhood, and the ball went into right field. This is one of the things about the shift that you can't factor in, and that is guys are playing where they've never played before, and they don't even know what to do. But you've got to you've got to be thinking out there. You've got to know where your your second baseman, if you're De Young. But the you got to know where the second base is positioned. There's no way in a hard hit ball that he can get there. Because he was way in the hole in the first base hole. It, you just got to anticipate those things. But it appeared as though DeYoung was there to take the throw and then bailed out. Yes. That Wong was going to replace him there. He heard footsteps. Right. You know and he's got to know that he's closer. That's the, how the play is made. Oh, this is what we've been hearing about the Cardinals and their defense yep. guys. You know, they've had their problems already in this game. Leak didn't cover first base in that last inning. So Bruce with an opportunity with first and third and one out. He pulls one through the hole for a base hit. Conforto's in to score. Cabrera pulls in at second. Jay Bruce with his 63rd run batted in and the Mets lead 4-0. Dave Bruce just keeps getting it done, huh, Keith? Yep. You got that hole. Sinker ball pitcher looking for a double play. You can get a little closer to the plate. That's an easy ball to pull right there. We're in the second inning, and each of the first seven hitters in the Mets batting order already have a hit. Cespedes drove in the first Met run with a single through the hole into left. Cabrera at second, Bruce at first, and Cespedes takes a strike. Who's the air charge to, Gary? Uh, they gave it to Jerko. Yeah. It's a tough air for but him. But I wonder whether that's one where the score will go to the clubhouse and say whose responsibility was it to be there. Right, because the throw was right in the button. It was a yeah. perfect throw. Yeah. I, I got to think it's a mental error. And, uh, that's drilled to deep left field. Back goes Pham. Oh. Cabrera is in. Bruce stops at third. Cespedes at second with an RBI double. Five to nothing, New York. And Cespedes is two for two with two driven in. Well, they're teeing off on Leak. Not much sink at all. He already burned him the pitch before, and a sinker came right back with it. The same result. 
And I got to think there's no one up in that Cardinal bullpen. I don't know why. They're going to intentionally walk Duda to fill the bases now and bring Flores to the plate. And now Ray Ramirez and Terry Collins are coming out to have a look at Cespedes. Oh, gosh. Who broke it down between first and second. I didn't know if that was because. Bruce had already stopped at third or because something was bothering him but here we go again. Ooh. Well what you worry about with a hamstring is when you start playing every day it's the fatigue he's going to stay in. Well. He ran extremely hard from first to home in the first inning. Here coming out of the box on this double. And he never really ran hard. No. I don't see anything. I wonder whether it was re his reaction afterward that attracted the attention of the dugout. And wonder why that might have been the reason why he had it in third gear. Well, he's still in. So the Mets already with a five nothing lead the Cardinals will get their bullpen cranking bases loaded and one out here's Flores who had a base hit to drive and run his first time and Wilmer takes the cutter down for ball one. Well in the immortal words of Whitey Herzog when a pitcher doesn't have it get him out because your team is down four runs if you leave them in an extra inning or extra couple of batters and you get down seven runs you're not going to win the ball game. You keep it four runs with the early in the ball game. You got a chance to come back. John Brebbia up in the bullpen for the Cardinals. And Wilmer takes the breaking ball off the plate two and one. Flores is the Mets 15th batter. The Mets already have eight hits and an intentional walk. To the first 14. It's like the night Stephen Matz had the other day. Fouled off, and it's two and two. Wilmer up at the plate with the bases loaded. He had a grand slam in 2014. He had a grand slam in 2015. He had a grand slam in 2016. He does not yet have a grand slam in 2017. Mm. That's have hit two grand slams this year. Bruce and Cespedes. When we're getting a rare chance to play recently and trying to cash in already has an RBI single tonight. And Flores Ooh. pops it up in the shallow right. Bruce at third is going to tag but Sierra's got a really strong arm and Bruce is not going to try it. See, make him throw. Bruce came down that line hard. Make him throw. It might kick off the catcher. Bounce away from the pitcher backing up, and you got to run. You never know. Well, we've already seen Sierra make a wild throw in this series. But that was the Little League home run. The Reyes. So Reyes gets cracked with the bases loaded. Now two out. That sent eight men to the plate in the first inning, and Reyes is the eighth man up in the second inning. Reyes lined one off the glove of Carpenter for an infield hit in the first. And Jose takes a slider low and in for ball one. Bruce at third, Cespedes at second, Duda at first. Two runs already home here in the second. And Reyes takes a fastball for a strike, one and one. The hitters were a superstitious sort. They'd want us up here every game. I don't think they know we're here. <laughs> well, that's that's a good thing. We could wave and yell. That's, but a, yeah, that's a good. You don't want to break the spell. <laughs> By the way. They're all superstitious. Yeah, every ball player. Certainly. Leak ahead in the count one and two. And Reyes bounces one foul. Oh. 
was interesting. That was a ball that was hit on the ground to Carpenter. He threw it back to the pitcher, and they didn't take it out of play. Every ball that's hit seems to be taken out of play these days. Anything that hits the ground, right? Too high, two and two. Maybe they're running out of the new balls. Need to save a few. <laughs> Fiftieth pitch of the night coming for Leak. And Reyes lines one to center field. That's a base hit. Bruce is in. Here comes Cespinus. Fowler's throw to the plate is cut off. Reyes tacks on two more with another two out RBI hit. Seven to nothing, New York. High fastball got on top. Rose, nicely done. Well, the horses horses are out of the barn. Cespedes looks pretty fine here. Whatever was apparent enough for the dugout that Ramirez and Collins went out to see him. You couldn't see evidence of it there. Now Darno, the ninth man up in the inning. And, uh, Mike Matheny not making a move. Well, I tell you what, it might be getting to the point. If we get a minute base hit here, it's like uh, save the bullpen. And go out there and Davy Johnson and Ron Darling find your own way out of this yeah. find a way out of it. Well yep. they got a complete game out of Michael Walker last night and that's drilled in the left the base hit for Darno. Duda will stop at third that ball was hit so hard it got to fam in a heartbeat. And this is a shellacking. So now the bases are loaded again and DeGrom's coming up. He led off the inning by lining out to right field. I mean, Another pitch up in the strike zone. Yep. He's got to live on the knees. Yeah. And he's not. He's got to be Larry Fine. Yeah. He's not fine. He's in trouble. You know, they've got, I, I look, they have Lance Lynn pitching tomorrow, who's a very accomplished pitcher. So sometimes when you have a rookie or something starting the next day, sometimes you don't want to go to the bullpen early because you might need him tomorrow. Now DeGrom hits a bouncer on the right side. Wong makes the play in time to get to Grom. Side retired. Ten Mets came to bat in that second inning, and four of them scored. Mets really putting a hurting on Mike Leake. Seven nothing Mets after two. The rally killer.
Being a big first two innings for the Mets. Three in the first, four in the second against Mike Leake. Oh, and oh, we've got a we've got a, a visitor. Hey, buddy. Well, Who let you in? <laughs> we're, we're here amongst the people, Keith. This is part of the deal. What's your name, my man? How did you get Trevor? The, how did Trevor. you get security clearance? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you kid. Gary, you're next. Magnary Sierra leads off in the third inning. Gary, did you work on your uh, autograph on your kid? Hang in there. Not very much. No, there's a lot of, there's a lot of games can't, left. Can't you tell? You've seen my. Don't autograph. give up the ship. You keep fighting. Here you go, Trevor. Boy, nothing between you and Ru Newt Rockney, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> and we get him on the run. We're gonna keep him on the run. That's right. Oh, <laughs> who played fight, Newt? Was fight, it Pat O'Brien played Newt? Yes. Yeah. Fight, 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 fight. And the Gipper uh, was uh, Reagan, right? Right, Reagan. Yeah. Magnary Sierra takes it high, and Degrom falls behind 3-0. Be interesting to hear what's with Jacob uh, tonight. Uh, I don't know whether it's he's a little sick or there's just he looks more lethargic than you usually see him. Well, I thought that first inning visit from Dan Worthen was telling. Yeah. You know, you're just not going to see that after two outs and a walk in the first inning, unless there's something that they already know is an issue. We'll be curious if this game gets really out of hand if they pull him early. You know, if he gets his five innings in, they if they take him out, it'll raise some eyebrows. Slow down, big boy. <laughs> well, <laughs> a little looper into shallow left. Suspect is coming on. It'll drop in front for a base hit. So Suspect is uh, not going. Full out headlong to try and keep that base hit from landing. I don't think you're going to see too many divots the rest of the year. Well, we've seen him make two sprinting runs on the bases. In fine form. I guess it's a matter of picking his spots. Trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. Here's Leak, who's one of the better hitting pitchers over the last few years. And it's a little weird to see him bunting down 7 0 in the third mm. inning. Leak has just six hits this year, but he's a lifetime 200 hitter. He's got six career home runs. You know what you always say, though? You're, you're fearful of the double play. Carpenter can hit the ball out of the ballpark. He's done it to DeGrom. Just move the runner along, give Carpenter a chance to get you a little bit in this game. Yeah, but Leak has got a position player's number. Yeah, that's right. And he does pull the bat back, tries the butcher boy, and fouls it off. Spectrum high speed pitch for it tonight. Obama's has got it up to 97, Leak at 90. I don't know, the, the whole pitcher wearing the single digit thing. It, it irritates you, it, doesn't it? It's, it's just not right. Well, especially that number. I mean, that was my childhood idol, number eight. Also, your former catcher. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Idol two. Grounded down to third. Pass floor as a base hit for a leak. By uh, Wil Wilmer Flores, even with the bag with two strikes on the pitcher. I guess he was had to play for. An attempted bunt by Leak. With two strikes, get back. Yeah, exactly. Here's Jeez. Carpenter, who had that 13 pitch at bat to open the game, fly it out to Bruce on the warning track and right. Carpenter five for nine in this series, so a chance for the Cardinals to get some of this baggage off the board. Down seven to nothing. Sierra at second, Leak at first. Leaks faster than your average pitcher, and Sierra's faster than just about everybody. <laughs> and the curveball from DeGrom misses for ball one. Mm -hmm. You could use a little pick me up. Three infielders on the right side against Carpenter. Big hole at shortstop. 
Mm. And a knee high strike with a slider, one and one. for DeGrom you usually see him working at a little brisker pace than he is tonight. Well it makes you think that one way or another he's just not feeling his best. He's trying to fight his way through it as we've seen him do on numerous occasions when things are not going swimmingly for him. It's a, not had many pitchers recently who self correct the way DeGrom does. One two coming. And it's up and away to Carpenter. Two and two. Starting to cool off a little bit now. Hot day today, wasn't it? Did, uh, did you tell me it's supposed to be hotter tomorrow? Hotter tomorrow, yes. But we won't be outside tomorrow. Be inside. I think the, the booth is hotter than here. Think? Oh, I'm going to be in my backyard tomorrow. <laughs> You're not coming? I got a day off tomorrow. Popped up in the left center. And Cespedes puts it away. That's the first out of the inning. Where are you going on the weekend, Ronnie? What, what game do you got? I got a um, Houston at Baltimore. Uh, Houston had just lost there. Outstanding shortstop Carlos Correa out six to eight weeks with the torn ligaments in his thumb. And uh, they got shut down today by James Paxton and the Mariners. You'll see Gary Thorne and Mr. Palmer. Yes. Tell yes. him I said hello. I will. It's going to be interesting to see that. There's a lot of star power on that Houston team Altuve and Springer and Bregman and. And they should be getting Dallas Keuchel back fairly soon, and they'll have to figure out what to do with their rotation. As Brad Peacock has done an amazing mm. job while he's been out. Here's Tommy Pham. Peacock last night went to eight and one, two point four nine. But Musgrove, Joe Musgrove, has not been very good. So maybe that's the spot. Well, there are a number of teams that are wrestling with rotation issues, not the least of which is the Chicago Cubs. And last night, after John Lackey. Came back from the DL and went five innings for the win against the Braves. He declared that he will not move to the bullpen. That if they ask him to move to the bullpen, he'll go home. Which I thought was um, a little excessive. Wow. Now it probably is the case that they'll move Mike Montgomery to the bullpen. Yes. But Lackey, you know, he's not exactly been lights out this year at age 38. Bam drives one of the gap in left center field. Cespedes races over and makes the catch. He almost overran it. So Cespedes with another sprint and runs down the drive by Fam for the second out. You're right, Gary. He almost got this on the head on the coconut just in front of him. He had it better than I thought, but he, he had to slow up there all of a sudden. Got there quickly. So it's been an interesting night for Cespedes already as far as his starts and stops. Already drawn attention from the trainer. He's sprinted home from first on a double, scored from second on a single, made that play. Every time he runs, though, he's always bent over after that. <laughs> Here's Dexter Fowler with two out and two on. Fowler walked his first time up and he hits this one sharply but Reyes has it his play is to first side retired back to back hits to start the inning but DeGrom works through it middle of the third seven nothing New York.
around the metropolitan area. Big little kids, little little kids. It's always great to see. I don't know if you guys, you, you drive down a road, you yeah. come across a field and there are kids playing, whether it's a league or just fooling around, it just makes you smile. It does. It does. I do, I'd never like to see an empty baseball field. You know, I was lucky enough this year on Memorial Day, I was in Rowayton, Connecticut, you know, a small little town is John Brevia coming in. Last time he pitched was 10 days ago against the Metropolitans in St. Louis, and they had the parade, and the parade oh. had all the Little League kids in it. It was cool. Parades are great. You know, the fire trucks with the kids on it. I used to love opening day when they had all the guys lined up in the outfit, all the teams, and they yeah. had the loudspeaker. And you'd run around the bases when they called your name. <laughs> Four no fouls went off the left side and Jericho right to the railing. And he's got it. So Conforto getting his third at bat. Only in the third inning. Hi. Oh hi. What's your name? What's your name? Antonia. Antonia. What a nice name. Well, Antonia. How long you had those braces? How long? How long you had the braces? <laughs> How many? Oh boy, I had them too. I had them for two years. You, you'll love it when you get them off, and your teeth will look great. Where are you from? Pennsylvania. Long trip. You know, the first day I had my braces, I was playing a pickup basketball game, and a guy yelled, and the basketball went right into my lips, and it took the oh, the school nurse a good hour to pull my lips apart from the braces. <laughs> I was crying. <laughs> Keith, I think that explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> will, will you one? Will you sign oh, I got a thing. Sign. And two, you just scared no, this young you little girl. You don't play basketball, do you? Okay, I thought so. See, I knew she could have been a point guard for all you know. <laughs> that was not a good experience for me. There you go. Enjoy the game. <laughs> See you later, Antonia. <laughs> I mean, just devastated. Walking off devastated, never be the same. I don't think it's so much devastated as really confused. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was not a, a happy moment for me. <laughs> oh. One, two to Cabrera. He told me I could get an autograph, and some old man's telling me we got to get, get oh, him man. out. <laughs> <laughs> you learn from your elders. What exactly did she learn there? Now watch her lips when <laughs> the ball in play. <laughs> My God. God. I really wanted Ariana Grande's <laughs> signature, but this old guy told me about getting him the mouth. Right. Two and two to Cabrera, who has a base hit and has also reached on there. He scored two runs. John Brebbia, the pride of Elon University. Formerly the Fighting Christians, now yeah. the Phoenix. The Phoenix. You're good with those nicknames, Gary. College basketball. Uh, is yeah. that what it is? Yeah. Clueless. A little pop up into shallow right center. Wong going out a long way and gets to it. To retire Cabrera, two out. Road ahead presented by Buick. Noontime game tomorrow. Keith's staying home, but he'll be back on Friday for the first of three with the A's. In fact, Keith will be here for all three of those games. Then we're in San Diego for four, Seattle for three, and Denver. For oh, are you three. going to Denver? Or no, no. Oh, uh, no. Okay. Yeah, I'm in uh, a San Diego only. It's a good only place to be. Yes. Can't wait. I'm going to go to that leather store in downtown Denver. They have great leather garments. Like chaps? <laughs> or, or well, what? like a jacket. Everything. Okay. You can from and they have uh, it's a big, it's a Western store. It's oh, a okay. great oh, clothing that, store. That, oh. I think you should have started right yeah, there. I, I thought oh, you were. Oh, just, you know, you just so you guys get your get your mind out of the gutter, <laughs> Colin. Let's go. In the air, pretty deep to left center. Bam back onto the warning track, and he runs it down to retire Bruce, and that retires the side. So Brebbia comes in and settles things down with a one, two, three, bottom of the third. I thought it was a village people thing or something. <laughs> I didn't know where you were going. <laughs> Holsters.
SNY Super Slow Motion is brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State Dealers. Mercedes Benz, the best or nothing. Jacob DeGrom with a 7 0 lead as we start the fourth inning. Jed Jerko leads off for St. Louis. Jerko struck out his first time up and takes the curveball off the plate. You know, it has not been a, a dominating performance for DeGrom over these first three innings, but so far he's put up three zeros. He's only struck out one. And Jerko pops one up. Going for it, Cabrera. One away. Oh, this is the best part of coming up here. The oh. food arrival. Wings. We got the uh, the wings in the helmet. Dan and John's wings, which uh, they have back in the Promenade Club. Dan and John were two guys from Buffalo. They look uh, so muy caliente. Hi. So we're talking about we're talking about really authentic here. What else do we have? Okay, these look like um, uh, fried cheese sticks. It's big moths. I think our it's our waitresses are. There, can I call them waitresses? I think they should come. Get, would you guys get a chair for the ladies? <laughs> they can join us. Our servers. <laughs> okay, it's better. Yes. Thank you. And we have the uh, the Bauhaus. Oh, uh, buns. I know you want so, one of these. Yeah, the the, the um, Taiwanese buns. What are these things? Those are mozzarella sticks from yeah, Big Moths. Uh, used to have those at Bennigan's in St. Petersburg. Ben again. Ben again. Lynchy. <laughs> so we got some big time food offerings here, all from the uh, Promenade Club. Oh, nice catch by the guy right up uh, to our right, nice. wearing the Conforto jersey. That's an outstanding play right there. See, that's a nice thing about being out here too. We get to witness the uh, the good fielding in the stands. One of us is going to get waffled while we're eating. That could happen too. We never have a chance to get a ball in the booth. Molina finds the hole, and he's got himself a base hit. That's the third St. Louis hit, and Molina's fourth hit in the series. Oh, you went for the. Um the Bauhaus you went for the pork belly. Oh that's what it is. Oh, yes. That's the, that, that's the highlight. Yeah. The pork belly is. Just Sorry I didn't realize. Unbelievable. You like that one. Uh, oh. A bite already. You can have look, it if you want. No, no I'm fine. Look, look <laughs> Ronnie there are more. Oh nice. Just one more of the. Uh, Beautiful. The uh, Bauhaus buns. Here's Paul DeYoung who flied out to left his first time up. I have to wait till between innings. Yeah yeah. Well you 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 have a. I have to actually work. Yeah, you carry the <laughs> major weight here. Keith, Keith has an ability to eat during the inning and still contribute that I am in awe of. I don't yes. know how you do it. It's like when I talk too much in the opening and they say wrap it up and I like I'm out like that. Right. Same thing with the eating. You I know have that knack. You know how much is too much. <laughs> you know when to say when. <laughs> <laughs> wrap it up. My favorite line in TV. <laughs> Keep wrap it up. That uh, wipe, uh, wiping the, the uh, oh, don't get it on your wiping the mic with the uh, napkin provides a nice little sound there for the show. And we get that every <laughs> all the time. That last fastball, one of the uh, better looking fastballs Degrom has thrown tonight. He's ahead 0-2 on Dion. And he threw that one by him for strike three. So perhaps DeGrom feeling a little more energized. Strikes out DeYoung for his second strikeout of the night. It's a good fastball here. With a little cut on it. Upstairs. Yeah, you've been saying uh, DeYoung has a little hole up there, right? Yes. Yes, I have. Well, like most. These days, that seems to be the case, right? Left hand hitters used to be the ones you could get out upstairs. Now it's the right hand hitters, too. Jackson Brown, these days. <laughs> Just thinking that if I pitched today, would I become a four seam fastball pitcher? It's interesting. I think you, you might would. have to. I think you would, yeah. I'd have to. Colton Wong grounded out to do to his first time up. I know we were all fascinated reading that story in Sports Illustrated yeah. about the evolution of pitching and pitch selection and that 
fastballs are being thrown less than ever in part because especially two seamers sinkers are getting hit harder than ever because they're all low ball hitters. One and one to Wong. The, the other thing that I found well there there are a dozen things I found interesting in that article but one of them is everything's relative to major league hitters. So we think because a guy throws 96 miles an hour it should be almost unhittable. But what if everyone's throwing 96 hitters just adapt that's what they do. So 96 becomes the norm. No big deal for them. One two to Wong. And he fouls off the fastball. Well. Then it certainly. Calls into question how one best builds one's pitching staff. You take guys. Who have the velocity inherent. And turn them into more breaking ball pitchers, or do you seek guys who are more breaking ball pitchers? Mm. I think you look for the arm. Don't you think, Ronnie? Yeah, you always look for the arm. You look for the arm, but I think what the article was trying to say, what Yankees and Houston and other teams are doing, is that if you have, if you're up in the air, whether to throw a fastball or breaking ball, error with the breaking ball. Pull through the hole, and a base hit for Wong. Molina will pull in at second. Well, you know, it's interesting watching the Cardinals because with Wainwright and Lance Lynn and Mike Leake, even though he got yeah. beat up tonight, you've got guys who are not hard throwing pitchers who are, have really been the most successful element of their team. Pete Rose told me this, and I, I believe it. You know, well placed fastball is the toughest pitch to hit. Um, that being said, a good breaking ball, I mean, your good one, your best one, no one hits it. If you're, an, uh, uh, you know, one of the upper elite pitchers in the league. There's Magnary Sierra, and he pops one up into shallow left. In comes Cespedes, and the side retired. Second straight inning, DeGrom gave up two hits. Second straight inning. He leaves them stranded. Still 7 0 Mets in the fourth. Tonight, who's the only member of the 3,000 hit club who has the same number of hits in both home and road games? I know that one. Easy one. 
Eric Fryer is going to take over behind the plate for Yadier Molina. That might give them a chance to let Molina play in the day game tomorrow. If you follow baseball, you know that one. That's a that's an anomaly that's so cool. Cespedes has already had himself an active night with the bat on the bases in the field. Chases the breaking ball by Brebbia. And it's 0-2. John Brebbia working his second inning of relief after Mike Leak lasted just two innings. Leak gave up 10 hits, seven runs, four earned, an intentional walk, and no strikeouts. Carrie, can I ask you where Elon University is? North Carolina. North Carolina. Oh, that makes sense. Should know that. I know the town. I just realized the university's in. there. I think it's in Elon, North Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> As opposed to Wake Forest. You know, there is a Wake Forest, North Carolina, but Wake Forest is not in Wake Forest, North Carolina. South. It's in Winston Salem. One and two to Cespedes. Cespedes a single and a double. He's driven in two. He's scored two. Mets got three in the first and four in the second to build this big lead. And Jacob DeGrom has done his job as usual. Left to right and Sierra is over. One out. Time for the unlimited baseball break brought to you by T-Mobile. The Phillies banged out 20 hits today against the Marlins. Mike Del Franco drove in three in their 10-3 win. Mike Montgomery, who may be going to the bullpen, hit a home run, allowed just two hits in six innings. The Cubs have now won six in a row, and they're just two games behind Milwaukee in the NL Central. Board of the game presented by Investors Bank, banking in your best interest. John Carlos Stanton says, if you can't beat the worst team in the league, not good. But wow. it's baseball, John Carlo. Every I, dog I, has its day. I remember Dwight Gooden said that about the Pittsburgh Pirates once and never won another game, or so it seemed like you never won another game against the Pirates. Baseball gods got them. It's 162. Yeah, right. And you know you create urgency for yourself when you put yourself in positions like the Mets and the Marlins are in because you know here we are counting down 12 days to the trading deadline. Are they going to break up my team. So those games become even more important in a short and a short term basis. But you know until you get down the pennant stretch you can't really think that way. And Duda went around on the half swing, and Brebbia has his first strikeout. Lucas wanted David Rackley to ask for help, but Rackley said, I got this one. Brebbia has a good breaking ball. He's got some good stuff for a guy who hasn't pitched in 10 days. He was released by the Yankees, picked up by the Diamondbacks. Cardinals got him in the minor league rule five draft two winters ago, and he made his major league debut earlier this year. Oh, what do we have here? What is this? Oh man! What did you get? And it looks What's like going on here. Looks like a, a donut type issue here. I'm trying to lose some weight. What well, are you doing? Don't don't worry about it. Tonight. Oh, we've got edible. We've got cookie dough. Cookie dough. You have some it's kind of cookie dough ice cream. It's just cookie dough, right? Well, I got to bring this, this home. My family they're just crazy about it. Wilmer flies one out to right, and Sierra's right there to get it. Side retired. Six up and six down for Brebbia in relief. Will chow down and DeGrom will go back to the mound with a 7 0 lead.
dealers. The Ford Summer Sales Event is on. For big savings, go to buyfordnow.com. We go to the fifth inning. Mets with a 7 0 lead. And the pitcher, John Brebbia, will take the turn at bat. Brebbia has worked two perfect innings in relief, so the Cardinals will continue to ride him. He hadn't pitched in 10 days, so. Why not? And DeGrom throws one to the backstop for ball one. Luke Voigt has come out on deck to bat for Matt Carpenter, so. Yeah. Mike Matheny's already taken Molina out of the game, and now he's going to take Carpenter out as well. Raising the white flag. Well, with a noon game tomorrow, it might be the right move. So it's the baseball equivalent of Greg Popovich. Now he doesn't take his stars on the road. Just Taking the stars out of the game. Inside out swing lined right to Flores. And Brevi retired one away. Well, Jacob DeGrom has just been wonderful. Seven innings or more in each of his last six starts. The only pitcher to have seven straight seven inning starts this year was Del Dallas Keuchel of the Astros. And DeGrom's going for that tonight. Warren DeGrom let's check in with Steve Gelb's report tonight is brought to you by the New York Lottery Steve you know you guys were talking a lot about this in the first couple innings DeGrom's inconsistency tucking that glove in during his delivery it's something that DeGrom actually noticed during the All Star break and was working on it the last couple of bullpens that he threw trying to get that more consistent and really at the end of the day it's all part of a bigger search over the last two years for DeGrom to try and consistently keep that front side in with his delivery he talks all the time about stuff how he's still flying open too much when delivering the ball to the plate now clearly he's had this certain level of success that it that it hasn't affected um, you know too badly but Ron I wonder as Flores dives and throws that one over so makes a nice play right over there but Ron have you ever experienced something in your career where you knew what the problem was and yet time in Time out. You couldn't figure out a consistent way to fix it, like Degrom has had with this issue. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, Steve. I I was having problems one year, almost the entire year, as Wilmer goes far to his left to make that play. I've not seen a lot of good defensive plays in the infield. That was one of them. I had spent one year I could not throw my curveball for strikes. I'd kind of loop it in there and, and then throw it slow just to get a strike occasionally, but I couldn't throw that good. Hard one, and it wasn't until September, of all things, that I figured out I was throwing in the outfield, and off flat ground, and I was I wasn't stepping, I was just standing straight and flipping it to uh, one of one of the other pitchers. And I said, God, that ball's breaking good today. And he said, Yeah. He said, uh, You've been having trouble with your breaking ball. I said, Yeah. He goes, Just shorten your stride. You shorten your stride, that means you'll get on top of your breaking ball better. I did it the next start. And I think I struck out 10 or 12 or whatever. I was like, all year, five months, I've been waiting for this curveball. And it was just this simple thing of shortening my stride, like maybe a shoe. So, Ron, yeah. let me ask you this question. For someone like DeGrom, he's had success despite this issue. So, what is the fine line between trying to work on something but not changing things? Too much and getting away from things that are still clearly working. Well, uh, listen, I, I had success that year too. I won 16 games. So you can have success and be a little off. What you're searching for when you pitch is you're searching for perfection. Reyes on the backhand, a long throw to first and just a shade late. And Pham beats it out, but Reyes has looked so much better at shortstop tonight than he did last night. That was a nice play, and only Pham's speed. Prevented him from getting the out. Tough play, momentum carrying him out to left field. Fam runs too well. Fam's a nice player. I like yes, he is. The more I see of him. So finish my thought, Steve. What you're searching for as a pitcher is that you want it to be a four or five step dance, where you hit every spot. Your mechanics are on time, and once you get there, you're going to throw the ball exactly where you want all the time. Best I've ever seen that is Greg Maddox. Was Dexter Fowler has walked and grounded out. The 
Degrom moves him back. A ball and a strike. That is the pitch. <laughs> uh, uh, I told you guys before. I'm really looking at the entire second half, all around baseball. Our pitchers, because of what's happening with the home run, going to take back the inside corner. They got to, or they're just going to be bludgeoned all summer. Our umpire is going to call the inside strike. I, I, I'm not even saying throwing it for a strike. I, I, I'm saying that at some point. Guys are going to have to start being on their fanny teeth and 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 being mean about it. I'm not going to like it, but There's no argument from me. Darno setting up away. Dollar takes it high, but as a hitter, if a pitcher dusts you off, makes you move. Mm -hmm. Does that necessarily affect the rest of your at bat? No, I, any, anyone worth their weight in gold uh, uh, as a player is going to stick his nose in there even more and, and, and try to hit one 100 miles an hour up the box. But there are some hitters that can be intimidated, Gary. Yeah. And you can't find out today if you don't do if you're not doing it. But what it does is when you do throw something under someone's chin and they're looking at you from the from the seat of their pants. You throw a breaking ball that's not so great on the outside corner and they pop it up the left instead of hitting it over the uh, over the fence. That's the effectiveness of it. Fam runs Fowler clouts one out to left center back in the gap goes Cespedes to get it and that retires the side. Five scoreless innings for Jacob DeGrom. Halfway through at City Field seven nothing New York. Driven in a couple of runs. Mets scored three in the first, four in the second. Jacob DeGrom has done the rest. Five scoreless innings, just two strikeouts tonight. Hasn't been overpowering, but he's been plenty good. Luke Voigt, who pinch hits, stays in at first base. Magnary Sierra moves from right field to center field. Jose Martinez will play right field. He'll bat in the number three spot as Fowler comes out. Jose Reyes leads off the home fifth against John Brebia, who begins his third inning of relief. Reyes already two for two. He drove in a couple of runs with a second inning single. So Reyes over the last 17 games hitting over 400. We mentioned this last night and it did come to pass. There is a new National League batting leader. Yeah. Justin Turner last night accumulated enough plate appearances to qualify and slid into the lead today with a 370 batting average. And Murph is number two. Yep. Fascinating, right? Wow. Turner and Murphy. Fly ball center field. And Sierra back. 
One out. Seven up and seven down for John Brabia. Well, those were the numbers starting today. Turner, who had been out with a hamstring injury, that's why he didn't have enough plate appearances for a long time, finally got to that number last night. Buster Posey had a big hit for the Giants today. They rallied for three in the bottom of the eighth. Posey had a two run double, and they beat the Indians five to four. And with the Twins beating the Yankees, that means Minnesota is now just a half game out of first place. Did it against that uh, fantastic Cleveland bullpen. Oh, look at the ball back at us. That's cool. Hopefully, get a foul ball here, huh? Well, we've already had a couple in the neighborhood. Break out your gold, Keith. It's coming up. Oh, I got the silver ring on. I don't know. I'll, I'll take it off. Just great to be out in the elements and oh. seeing the uh, twilight turn into night. See the lights fully take hold and illuminate the field. See the dark sky against the green of the field. We just we we're, we're so tucked back where our booth is, we, we never see the sky. And right. That, that, that's the greatest part about being up here. I mean the traffic lights and the bridges around New York and. Very cool. Darno is one for two tonight. Single to left his last time up. And he slugs this one to deep left field. That goes Fam. And it's over his head. And Darno pulls in at second base with a one out double. Second hit of the night for Darno, his ninth double of the year. So you got a high fastball here? Sure did, right down the pipe. Fam never could get on stride. At some point, he needed to kind of take his eye off the ball, yes. run to a spot, yep. and then hope to find it. He kind of was had those little tiny steps work, and he wasn't able to use his great speed. So now Degrom bats for the third time. He batted twice during the second inning. Made two of the three outs in that second inning. By the way, we mentioned that David Cohn had led the major leagues in hits by a pitcher in '89. Yeah. The only other Met to do that was Dwight Good. Yes. He, but that uh, was in the '90s, wasn't it? Well, once in '85. Oh, okay. And then, um, but Doc, the two years that he led the majors in hits by a pitcher, he tied. In '85, he tied with Fernando Valenzuela. And in 92, he tied with Tom Glavin. Mm. So the only one to win it outright ever was Coney. Oh. You, you just can't give him this ammunition. That's a, as soon as we get the Yankee series, that's all we're going to hear about. I, I just want to see, ask David how he got that weak swing to work for him that year. <laughs> you know, he also has another um, mark on his resume as a hitter. As DeGrom strikes out, um, David Cohn was the first Met pitcher ever to get a pinch hit. Ever. What inning was it? 30 second <laughs> inning? <laughs> really? Sorry, George. We're only making fun. You know, we love you. If I recall correctly, it was in Montreal, I think 91, 92, something like that. So here's Conforto up for the fourth time. He's gone one for three, singled and scored a run in the second. Every Met in the lineup has at least one hit except for DeGrom. And Brevia gets the breaking ball up. See all the hot moments from some of the top high school ballers as SNY and Overtime team up to bring you the best New York City hoops highlights all summer long. Check it out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.
What's the next course? I don't know, but it's, it's getting better and better as we go. Did you have one of those little round donuts? I, I didn't. Um, I didn't know what it was, so I was a little afraid of attacking it. I think Dave Freed ate them all. Well, what new? What new? He's protesting he only had five. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got we got it back, Gary. So is that the uh, is that the cinnamon or the chocolate? I, I went for the cinnamon, so I guess early to the gym tomorrow, Keith. You'll be at the gym tomorrow, right? With your day off? Uh, physical therapy. Conforto strikes out on the off speed pitch, and Brebby has his third scoreless inning in relief, his third strikeout. After five at seven, Cardinals nothing. Tonight's game, Mike League didn't last long. In fact, when he was backing up home plate, this dribble Cabrera scored a run and ran into him. Jacob DeGrom was not feeling his best early, but he has made his way through five scoreless innings. Jimenez Cespedes had to have a visit from the trainer, but he has made several inspired sprints and driven in a couple of runs. And we are sitting upstairs in the promenade at City Field, enjoying the view. Enjoying the amenities. I don't know if it's a temperature, um, but I'm enjoying being up here much more than the first time we were here. I like the view. I like the wind, the breeze. Sorry. Jed Jerko pops up the first pitch of the sixth inning, and Cabrera reels it in. One pitch and one out for Degrom. And now Eric Fryer will bat for the first time. Fryer came in for Yadier Molina. Molina, Carpenter, and Fowler all coming out of this game with a score lopsided. Early game tomorrow at noon. So we're already into trading season with the trading deadline now 12 days away. And uh, yesterday, the big news was that the Arizona Diamondbacks had picked up power hitting outfielder J.D. Martinez from the Tigers. And you never know what's going to happen, right? Right. So Martinez is in the lineup for the Diamondbacks tonight. He gets hit by a pitch, left hand, comes out of the game. Fortunately, X rays are negative. But, you know, it's baseball. Stuff happens. Fryer takes a call, third strike. Third strike out for DeGrom. Let's check in with the studio. Michelle Yu has a game break brought to you by your Tri Honda dealers.
All right, Michelle, six straight wins now for the Cubs as they try and close ground on the first place Brewers. Here's Paul DeYoung, and he takes a curveball for a strike. If you take away the strike season in 1994, the last time the Cardinals had back to back losing seasons, the 1950s. Wow. I mean, think about that. Six decades ago. That's back when Musial was playing. They didn't win after, what, that 46 was their. They, did they win in 46, Gary? Yeah, they beat the Red Sox in 46. 46. Now they didn't go till they didn't win again till 60, 64. 64. McCarver against and the that Tigers. Was, uh, no, no, uh, 64 against the Yankees. Yankees, right. that's right. 67 against the Red Sox, right? right. And then uh, 82 against the Brewers. In 2011 against Texas, that's right? 2006 right. against the Tigers. Of course. <laughs> we should remember that one. Right. 2 2 to DeYoung. And he rolls one slowly. Cabrera in front of it. Another easy inning for Jacob DeGrom. He sets the side down in order in the top of the sixth. What a roll he's on. City Field, nice night for sitting outdoors. Jacob DeGrom on top of his game as always. We've been uh, stuffing our faces, making some friends. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Mets scored a lot early, seven runs in the first two innings against Mike Leak. You had assessed with us with a couple of RBI hits. We kept on eating. DeGrom <laughs> kept on getting outs. And that's what the Mets box score looks like brought to you by Fidelis Care. No home runs for the Mets tonight, but Cespedes a pair of RBIs. Reyes a two run hit. Everybody except DeGrom has a hit in the lineup tonight for the Mets. And the Cardinals will go to their third pitcher of the night and bring in left hander Kevin Segrist to pitch the bottom of the sixth. We'll pitch in the first game of the series. I, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't say thank you so much to Ed Ryan and all the people that make it possible for us to be out here tonight and our stage manager Russ Relkin um, he does a great job all the time but um, the job he has to do tonight is above and beyond this is the first time I've ever saw Russ sweat <laughs> and, uh, he's just running around everywhere so Russ there he is right there greatest um, Russ looked very weary this afternoon folks he's doing double Dutch yeah, duty so he was a little nervous we appreciate it. 
He had to take everything he normally has all lined up because he's very organized in the booth. He had to relocate it out here. Oh. Segrist Monday night had an eighth inning in which he threw 10 pitches and struck out three. Yes, he did. Ball one and then nine straight strikes. It was his first appearance since coming back from a cervical spine strain or sprain. Shot the other way, a base hit for Cabrera, his second hit of the night. So now as Dribble has a hit from each side of the plate in this game, and the Mets now have a dozen hits. This is baseball crazy. Last night the Mets looked as overmatched as any team could look against Michael Walker, and today they got their hitting shoes on. Well, they've also fielded a lot better. Yeah, they have. They needed one of these kind of games to tell you the truth. I, I wonder as a as an everyday player um, Keith when when you have a game like last night and, and as Ronnie said you can't look worse than the Mets did both with the bats and with the gloves. Is there a tinge of embarrassment that leads you maybe to focus a little more the next day. Well I think it's up with this team. I don't know there's such a mixture of youth. Uh, where when you're younger when you play poorly in the field it bothers you more a veteran team is just going to wash it away and come back strong the next day. But I think all in all teams. Uh, I, I'm sh teams will just turn the page is the term that we use. But you made the point when you were sitting down there last night because you had a really good view from uh, right next to the Mets dugout about how annoyed Jay Bruce looked mm. after that. Bad second inning the Mets had in the field, and, and you know he's he wasn't one of the guys who was perpetrating the nonsense. As he uh, strikes out for the first out, but but he is obviously in a, a leadership role on this team, and I, I wonder if that gets transmitted at all uh, in the clubhouse. Uh, you know, behind closed doors, you don't know. I mean, the press is not immediately let in to the clubhouse after a game. How long is it? Fifteen I, minutes. I forget. Ten minutes. I think it was ten, 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 ten minutes. Ten minutes. So a lot of communication can go on in that ten minutes before the press is allowed in. A lot of business can be taken care of. Uh, so, I think uh, young teams, it will affect negatively, because young players will take it to heart. Uh, veteran players. They're more, they've been down the road before and yes you do come a little more determined if I had a bad game in the field or made a costly error. Sure I bore, bore down more mm. the next game. I'm, actually I bore down. The next inning when I was out there. Yeah. I, I just think that when you're a good ball club. Scouts always say this about clubs they watch. Boy they play nine hard innings every night. And people think that nine hard innings means you play the seventh, eighth, and ninth hard. It's not. It can start from the beginning. So I think the embarrassment comes from when you're a team that looks like it wasn't ready to play in the first inning. That, to me, is a little embarrassing. Cespit is two for three tonight. He's driven in a pair of runs. Segrist behind him, two and zero, oh. and finds the corner. Well I, I, I just wonder how that compounds psychologically when you're in a situation like the Mets are in right now. Twelve days from the trade in deadline yeah. a lot of guys who could potentially be moved in that period of time. Well, you know, you're you're a team for now but you don't know what your team's going to look like in a couple of weeks. Well let's take it a step further. Um, does not knowing where you're going to be sometimes with younger players produce tight play where you're a little tight out there. Younger players all players read the paper some more than others but young players when they get criticized in the paper for their play. It has it, it, it has a greater effect negative effect than a veteran who has a bad day. I would only and, I, and this is this is such a bad thing to admit. I would only read the papers if I styled if I had a great game. I bought every paper that New York had. Really? I read it from front to cover. I was slapping myself on the back. I had a bad game. I didn't even look at the papers. Oh, I was the same way when I was younger. Yeah. 
when That's I great. came over to the Mets, I, I, you know, if I had a bad day, I had a bad. I didn't have too many. Cespedes so strikes out on the changeup for the second out. That's tremendous discipline, Ronnie. I don't know how you do that. What do you mean? Avoid reading. Oh, okay. when you have a bad day. Well, think about it. I still do it now. Like when we do our open, we have to tape an open, which uh, is very rare, guys. We usually do a live open. But uh, you saw the interview I had with Adam Wainwright at the beginning of the show. I can't watch that. Like, at the, like the start the show, I can't watch our open, and I can't watch anything I do in the open because all I can see is the mistakes, and I don't want to start a broadcast by thinking about all the mistakes I just made um, a couple minutes prior. So just bring good news to me. No bad news. I don't want to hear it. Obviously, you never go on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be a negative. Yes. Ninety-nine percent of the time, yes. I still remember Josh Tolley getting chased off Twitter. Mm -hmm. He wasn't the first, and he won't be the last. I'm too sensitive to listen to that. I mean, to to read that kind of stuff hurts my feelings. I just, I just think it's a lot of it's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because there's so much anger. So much anger. I don't and most of it you you just you shrug and you say what what has gotten into people this this anonymity that allows them to be so mean because they don't have to say it to your face well, that's, that's why that's what I mean gutless wonders <laughs> <laughs> that should help that should help your Twitter profile <laughs> I would recommend Keith you, you may not want to go on Twitter in the next five minutes <laughs> two and one to do that. He was one for two in a walk tonight. He had an RBI double in the first. And he hits under this one into right center field. And Sierra tracking it. And retires the side. A hit and one left after six, seven nothing Mets. His chief pitch cast tonight. Well, it's been interesting because he's dented the middle of the plate a lot. But I think what happens in these runaway games is that uh, a lot of hitters are taking a, yep. a, a pitch um, and they shouldn't be off to Grom. And he's figured it out and is just pouring the uh, fastballs in there. Colton Wong leading off in the seventh. Wong has one of the five hits for the Cardinals. A single to right his last time up. Rom trying to win his seventh consecutive start and trying to go seven innings for a seventh consecutive start. Well, this push him to 12 W's. This would be his 11th. 11th, okay. Well. Oh. 
He had the complete game against the Cubs, and he's never failed to go seven during this win streak. He's got the lower third of the order to face him here in the seventh. And Wong tops one slowly. Cabrera has to charge, make the bare hand play, and gets him. Nice. nice play as Dribble Cabrera for the first out. Sweet play. Bare hand nicely. Like an old second baseman, isn't it? Different guy running. He doesn't use the bare hand, but with Wong running, he knew he had to. Very so, nice. So I'm thinking DeGrom's next start will be the opener on the West Coast in San Diego. Right, right. Monday. Right? Yeah. Yep. Magnary Sierra takes a strike. So get this if if DeGrom wins tonight, he will have won seven straight starts, which has been done before in Mets history. Yeah. But only once has it been done by a pitcher pitching for the Mets when the Mets were under 500 in all seven of those starts. Jason Isringhausen did that in 1995. Won seven straight starts for a Mets team that was under 500 going into every one of them. That's impressive. And that's what DeGrom's trying to do here. One two to Sierra. Tap slowly tough play with Sierra speed Reyes with the bare hand play but no chance Sierra just too quick. Let's go back to that Cabrera play. Now watch his head the focus as he makes the throw. He's on the ball and then the target of course you got to know what you got to know where he's throwing. And just a fantastic play. Not easy. Reyes's was tougher. He had to come a longer way. And Sierra's faster than Wong. Oh. I mean, I, I don't know what they've got him at his top speed, but he's got to be one of the fastest guys in baseball. Yes. Right up there with Byron Buxton and people like that. Billy Hamilton. Yeah. Here's Greg Garcia pinch hitting. Last man on the Cardinals bench. Gerard Dyson. Trey Turner. D. Gordon. Double play ball. Reyes with the underhand flip. And it's dropped by Cabrera on the transfer. Out made at second. Sierra retired on the 6 4 force. And Garcia reaches first. I think the underhand shovel pass kind of threw a little bit of the timing off on this for Cabrera. Uh, took his eye off it too. Yep. And he caught it. All, all in the exchange. He knew you had to rush it a little bit. It was going to be a close play, and that's what happens. The uh, Cardinals are considering challenging that call, but they declined to do so. And that's a hard one to go to replay on because it is the habit of second baseman to not actually catch the ball, yeah. right? To actually. Kind of paddle the ball from their glove to their bare hand. So how do you how do you then prove possession and that it's on the transfer if the routine play does not have the second baseman actually catch the ball? But what's then that play right there was in the glove. What's the rule at first base on close plays? We've talked about it a lot. The ball hits the glove. It's inside the glove. It's considered a catch. Right. Not deep in the pocket. Right. There. But but if but if the first baseman has the ball go in the glove and come out it, it's not a catch right so for a second baseman the ball goes in the glove and comes out that's what just happened there was no actual catch that's right but, but because he was trying to shovel the ball with his glove to his bare hand which is a normal thing for a second baseman to do right. there, now the, the, it's not actually a catch and a transfer it's actually the catch is never actually made but a rare play for a first baseman is a runner on second on a ball coming to coming to him and the runner tries to go to third and he loses in the exchange. It's right. the same principle. Right. right. No. Absolutely. But it's not the habit of a first baseman to paddle the ball from his glove to his bare hand. Whereas it is for a second baseman on a double play. I mean the the master at that was Bill Mazeroski. Yeah. Who had the smallest glove I've ever seen. Joe Morgan used to do it. Uh, uh, Tito Fuentes. Turn. You uh, if you keep going down this road they're going to write another piece of legislation <laughs> for the rule book. But 
Um, when you used to, when I played, when you would play with really good defensive uh, up the middle infielders, that you could throw the ball to them and it would look like they never caught it, like they never touched their glove. Boyd foul tips it into the glove of Darno. That's strike three, getting over. And for the seventh straight start, Jacob DeGrom has gone through seven innings. And he's done it without a run scoring. Mike Matheny objecting to that last call. He wanted the. So West is going to look at the ball and see if it has a, a dirt mark on it. And now they're going to say no catch. And the inning continues. Wow. Oh, well. Like an old shoe polish play. Matheny knew exactly what he wanted. He wanted West to take a look at the ball. That's right. The home plate umpire. David Rackley who was screened by the catcher felt as though it was caught without the ball hitting the ground. Oh definitely. Yeah not even close. And that was the correct call. On the. Uh, not the challenge but the objection. By Matheny. But re really it should have been Joe's call originally he should have waved it off that it hit the dirt. So it's still two and two on Voigt. And now a full count. Good ingenuity by the veteran Joe West. It's like the old shoe polish play. Yeah. Garcia will run. 3 2 coming. And Voigt drives one to left field. Back goes Cespedes. This one's going to be over his head and off the wall. Garcia being waved around third. The throw goes to second. Oh. Skips by Cabrera. And Voigt arrives safely. If that ball had been fielded cleanly by Cabrera, he could have gotten an out at second before the run scored, but didn't come up that way. And the Cardinals. Get their first run of the night. It's now seven to one. There goes the seven scoreless streak. This ball is ripped. This kid's got some power. I like his swing. They have relegated him to the bench since the return of Wong. But I, that's a tough play for Cabrera yeah, right now. No, there. it wasn't easy at all. But the timing was if he had gotten it, he might have been able to make a tag before Garcia scored. It would have been a little easier if he was standing on the base instead of moving. So the overturned call on the strikeout will cost DeGrom the chance to go seven tonight. Terry Collins is going to pull him. One out shy. 110 pitches for DeGrom, who got off to a difficult start tonight in terms of. His ability to throw a low pitch count, but well, he makes it through six and two thirds and in line for his seventh straight win.
Paul Seawall comes in to face Tommy Pham with a runner at second. One thing TJ Rivera now playing first base, he'll bat ninth. As Duda came out, pitcher hits fifth. I think one theme of a Terry Collins regime since he's been here as manager of the Mets, as you see, DeGrom, sullen would be the word I, I'd use to how he was all day long today. Um, I was just saying that Terry Collins, when he gets a hot reliever or a reliever he likes, he's going to be in a lot of games. Now here's what we were talking about before about the possibility of having this run not count if the Mets had made the play at second. Oh, definitely not. Yeah, definitely not. Still ten strides. Not even play. close. Oh, and two to Fam. Yeah, that's on the outside corner. Got him looking with the slider. So Seawall comes in, makes quick work of Fam. Cardinals get just the one run. Seventh inning stretch, 7 1 New York. Different experiences. Mike Leake got knocked out after two innings, gave up seven runs and ten hits. Jacob DeGrom didn't allow a run until two out of the seventh. He's done after six and two thirds, his shortest outing in his last seven starts. Well, we've had a lot of company. Yeah. So, um, uh, the one woman with the glasses said that uh, she's the one in the black top yeah. said that she saw games at Ebbets Field. And that her grandfather, or I'm sorry, her father saw Babe Ruth hit a home run at Yankee Stadium. Wow. How about that? We got Dave to confirm it. <laughs> Is that on his computer? <laughs> <laughs> Sam Tui Valala pitching the bottom of the seventh for the Cardinals. Uh, one of the great names in baseball, right? Tui Valala throws awfully hard and throw up to 100 miles an hour. It's been bouncing back and forth, hasn't really made his mark yet. Wilmer Flores leading off at the bottom of the seventh. Wilmer had an RBI single in the Mets three run first. Mets added four more in the second and they've been cruising ever since. Wilmer getting a rare start tonight just his third this month. And he takes a strike from Tui Valala with a slider one and two. It's funny how seasons go right. There were six weeks there when you couldn't get Wilmer Flores out and yeah. you couldn't get him out of the lineup. And now all of a sudden in July has become a non factor. It's this one out to right center and Sierra over in the gap with Martinez and it's Martinez making the catch one away. 
Well, let's answer our Verizon trivia question. The only member of the 3,000 hit cl club with as many hits, same number at Coleman Road, and that's Stan the Man. That's awesome. That's a, that's incredible. What do you think yeah. about that? It's incredible. For a long time, Stan had the most hits of any player in the National right. League until Pete Rose. Pete Rose. Record. He was a great player. He was coiled at the plate. Yeah, like a corkscrew batting stance. Like right? a, he's like a rattlesnake ready to just strike on the ball. That's how my dad described his swing. Really? Like a, just a snake striking at the ball. Um, my dad told me the story once, Gary. This is pretty good. In Pearl Harbor, he was throwing BP to stand in 1945. And Stan was hitting ropes. He's throwing BP, and he said, "I'm just going." My father said, "I'm going to try to sneak one by him." He threw one extra hard. Stan hit a bullet right by his ear. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that two of the greatest left-hand hitters in the history of the game came from the same town: Stan Musial and Ken Griffey Jr., both born in Denora, PA. Oh wow! And Denora is that like uh, near Pittsburgh like Western PA or it is Western PA it's okay. coal mining country that's for sure. Huh. Was father there from there Gary can senior. I'm not sure if he was born there I'm not because he was a heck of a hitter too you know he was a doggone good player. <laughs> not quite at the same level. Oh no no, no his son was a better player but Ken Griffey was part of that big red machine and he hit second in that lineup. Uh, in front of uh, Pete Rose led off Griffey hit second uh, Morgan hit third Johnny Bench hit fourth Foster hit fifth Pro Tony Perez hit sixth Concepcion hit seventh and Geronimo hit eighth. Wow. Yeah, strikes out <laughs> for the second out. Yeah Ken Griffey senior was from Denora as well. So, mm. so some pretty good players came out of that quite a haul from that one town. Not home, no problem. Watch every SNY Mets game wherever you are on any device all season long with live streaming presented by Verizon. Just download the NBC Sports app or visit SNY.TV, your home for live streaming coverage of every SNY Mets game. Here's Travis Darno's had a good night. Two for three, a single and a double. Mets have wrapped out 12 hits tonight. First 10 came against the starter Mike Leak in the first two innings. So that's the third time on this homestand that the Mets have dispatched a starter in two innings or less. Right? They had the uh, the back-to-back -back games against the Rockies. John Gray went two innings. Tyler Chadwood went a third of an inning. And now tonight, Leak goes only two. Oh. And yet, <laughs> if they win tonight, they'll be three and three on the homestand. Oh, that's that's the bugle. But you know one thing about sitting up here that we don't hear in the booth is the cowbell man that we used to always hear at Shea Stadium because he was able to walk everywhere in the stadium. Right. But he's right here to our left and he's waving and he's one well, of the great guys of all time. You want more cowbell teeth? No. He's the guy. Okay. All right. Got his cowbell out. Oh there he is. It's good to see Calmo cowbell man in good health. Mm. He's battled some health issues the last few years. 0 oh and 2 to Darno. And breaking ball in the dirt from Tui Valala. Every ballpark has its characters. Yeah. Cowbell man right at the top of the list. <laughs> Cleveland had the guy with the big drum. That's he's right. Still, he's still there. John, John something. A John Adams. Yeah, John Adams. Mm -hmm. I remember in Little Rock, Arkansas. They used to have a guy. I don't know if he was there when you were there, Keith. He used to, in the behind the stands, there were bases on the cement, and he would run, and people would cheer him on. He would slide on the cement. Oh yes, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember? That was Willie. Yeah. Was he still alive he when you were there? Yeah. 19, he was. He was an elderly man. Yeah. 1981. He wore the Cardinal uniform. Correct or no? With us, he wore the Cardinal uniform. The young throws out Darno. Side retired. One, two, three inning for a two Ivalala. <laughs> gotta stay hydrated. You're gonna run those big races.
Baseball on SNY is brought to you by Cash for Life from the New York Lottery. You can win $1,000 a day for life. By Jeep and the unique brand of freedom you'll only find in the full line of Jeep vehicles. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. And by Nationwide, speak with David Grodner in Brooklyn or John Kamara in Hicksville today. Here we are up in the uh, promenade. And the only way we get a shot like this is because our cameraman, Pete Stendhal, is willing to risk his life. He's hanging off the edge of the upper deck. And I... I get a little queasy when he does this. Uh, uh, Pete and I have spent a lot of time today because he helped me with the interview of Adam Wainwright. So we're speaking. He said, what'd you do with the All-Star break? I said, I went to Eleuthera. He said, oh, my God, I've got land there. I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, I've got some land there. Do you know a guy named Skip Miller? I said, yeah, Skip is the guy that helped me rent this house in Eleuthera. He goes, yeah, he's a good guy. Did you go to the place? He knows Eleuthera like the back of his hand. <laughs> How'd you like it? Oh, it was nice. Unbelievable. Really? Um, yeah, no nice. one there, quiet. But it's hard to get to. Hard to get to, yeah. I guess it's a planes, quiet. trains, and automobiles kind of day. Paul Seawald got the final out in the seventh, pitching to Jose Martinez, who's up for the first time. He took over in right field in the fifth inning. Martinez draws a leadoff walk. Just the second walk given up tonight by Met Pitching. Final game of this series tomorrow, noontime start, so our coverage begins at 11 30 tomorrow morning. Seth Lugo gets the start for the Mets. Lance Lynn, who has uh, had scoreless outings his last two times to the mound, including one against the Mets, will pitch for the Cardinals. Yeah, a run scoring double, too. He's another left handed hitter. He is now. Yeah, he changed. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he was a right hand hitter all his life. He was like an 080 lifetime hitter, and just in the last few weeks, he dabbled with batting lefty. Keith and I saw him in St. Louis. He batted right handed summit bats and left handed right. other at bats. He really? didn't split it. But now I think he's, uh, now that he got that double yeah. batting left handed, he's, he's bought in. <laughs> well, why not, right? If, if you're not succeeding one way, yeah, it's an insanity thing, right? Continue to do something over and over. Some of us bang our head against the wall our entire lives, Ronnie. <laughs> but he does leave that pitching arm exposed, betting left-handed. Yes. You know? Yeah. That's but the you one can, thing. But you can wear the elbow pad. That's true. Zach Wheeler does it. It's most of the Mets pitchers. Yeah. DeGrom and Syndergaard. And Wheeler. Mm. They all bat from the opposite side. Mats. Mats. Something Davey Johnson wouldn't let Dwight Gooden do. Well, Doc wanted the bat. Dwight couldn't hit lefty. I, I don't, you know, I mean that is such an old wives' tale, <laughs> and everyone's bought it. But <laughs> Dwight was a switch hitter. He couldn't get a hit left-handed if he wanted to, but he could hit righty. He had a chance up there. He had some pop. Too. Yeah. He had a good swing. Just great athlete, all the way around. He's a champion of the spread after the game, too. Oh, oh man. God, could he eat. Jerko flies one out to right, and Bruce over to get it. Who eats more, he or, uh, or Greg Picker, do you think? Our producer, yeah. Greg Picker? Oh, well, um, in the, in the, in the uh, modern day, I think Pick has everybody beat. <laughs> Doc could eat, man. Yeah. Doc, when, when um, in the day, the steakhouse to go to was Morton's. And Dwight would order, a, you know, one of those huge... Uh, uh, Sides of beef, and he would, as a side to the side of beef, get a full lobster. That was his meal to go with, you know, <clears throat> appetizer and dessert. Now, did you ever go with Doc in Chicago to Ron's of Japan? I, I did. I couldn't go after that because it was just. Uh, do you know what cochon means in French? Yeah. I mean, that's what it was but, like. Going but, with I mean, you, you know how when you go to a Japanese steakhouse, they give you the full treatment. I mean, it's an enormous right. meal. And he'd do it two and three times oh, over. Oh, yeah. And the thing about Ron's of Japan is that they used to have an egg-like kind of substance that they would put on the lobster mm -hmm. that was, it seemed like Cholesterol City. I don't <laughs> know. And Doc would get double of that, too. 
I'd put Doc up against Rusty any day of the week. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you somebody else who you know could could eat as much as anybody, and he had the size for it. Frank Howard. Oh, you well. Ever, have, ever watched Frank Howard eat breakfast? Big Hondo. Hondo was like a dozen eggs guy for breakfast. <laughs> like Andre the Giant. Still have this this visual of Hondo in the in the sauna, lifting the free weights. <laughs> After a game, don't go any further. All yeah. six, eight of them. I think that's all you need to, to say. Frank Howard was so unique in so many different ways. When we would go on the road, he had this bag that looked like, you know, a bowling ball bag. And he would just bring that. And every day he would have patent leather white shoes, these baby blue Sands Belt slacks with a white polo that was like two sizes, two sizes too small. And when he'd go to the park, the club, he would wash the clothes. And he, that's what he wear all week. He used to drive Charlie crazy. I mean, Charlie went to me and go, hey, Keith, he's, he sleeps on the couch overnight, doesn't go home. Uh, <laughs> in the manager's office. That was an old couch, too. <laughs> I always was a little, a little leery to sit on that couch, to be honest with you. Hondo was known to come to the ballpark early, get dressed, and then go out and do his chores, whether it was uh, get a haircut. Uh, one time he was caught. Coming on the Triborough Bridge, and, and for older folks, you remember when they have they used to have the basket that you would throw the change in. Right. It was 375 to cross the Triborough in those days. He threw a nickel in there, five dollars, and was waiting. And people behind him were beeping, and uh -huh. you know, what are you doing? And he was waiting for change. Second walk of the inning is Fryer draws the free pass from Seawall. The other end of that story is he got out of the car and it was all six, eight of them in the Met uniform, and that shut everybody up behind him. <laughs> yeah, that's the one so thing you, 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 you really you didn't want to cross Frank because he he could be scary. He went ballistic in '83, and someone said something in the paper, unquoted, and we came and we came off that. You, you were there off the road. Were you there then, Swanee? I don't remember who it was, yeah. and he didn't know who it was, and Frank came in. And screamed and said, in other words, basically saying, you got any guts, say it to my face. Da -da 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 -da, not in the paper. Oh my gosh, yeah, holy cow. Those are the good days. <laughs> See, we think the good days are like when a manager screams and yells at you. Those are our fondest, fondest memories. It really is an interesting psychological study. <laughs> yes. I really. Well, I knew I. No, I didn't do it. I need to be on someone's. Couch. I was just saying. So, I, I was just saying to myself, "Gosh, I hope he doesn't think it's me, because I didn't do it." <laughs> the young fouls went off, and it's 0-2. Uh, he broke up that fight in the uh, Wrigley Field. Oh yeah. When Bill Robinson went into this. Uh, went up with over the top of the dugout. Well, the reason that started is because I was walking off the field after getting lifted and shellacked at Wrigley Field. And a, a patron uh, threw a full cup of beer in my face as I was walking off. And Bill Robinson was trying to go up and over. Right. The young strikes out for the second out. Two out and two on. And that's going to be all for Seawald with the left hand hitter coming up. <sighs> so Seawald works an inning, gives up a couple of walks, he'll exit. And they'll bring in the left-hander to face Colton Wong. 7-1 Mets in the eighth. We'll be right back.
Here's your course banquet timeless moment. Well, a lot of eating, a lot of meeting kids, a lot of signing autographs. Keith, you've got such good penmanship. So does Ron. That's the lady that was uh, told me she was at Ebbets Field. And what is this, Ronnie? You're, you're familiar with what yeah. this is. Uh, a, a friend of my wife's uh, works at a gallery, and someone is a big Mets fan and painted this and gave it to her. She gave it to me for us to sign. So early this year, I gave it to you guys. You signed it, and uh, now that's where it is. It's uh, in that young man's living room. I think Gary looks very sinister in that. <laughs> <laughs> sinister? <laughs> probably uh, true to life. Look like Simon Bar Sinister. Very nice. <laughs> There's no need to fear. Oop. Underdog, Underdog is here. here. <laughs> Jerry Blevins in to pitch to Colton Wong, who's one for three tonight. Cabrera made a nice play to throw him out last time up, and he oh. lines this one in the right field for a base hit. Martinez to third. He'll be held there. And the Cardinals have the bases loaded with two out, down seven to one in the eighth. Breaking ball from Blevins, and Wong was right on it. Boy, he's got a, a big high leg kick. And he's going to keep see. Oh, he has no bench. Yeah, he's used everybody. Yep. Mike Matheny pulled three of his starters early in this game, and so not only does he have to leave the left hand heading Sierra up, but he's got Adam Wainwright on deck to pinch hit because he's out of bench player. Martinez at third, Fryer at second, Wong at first with two out. Sierra is two for three. Dumped one in the left field for a base hit in the third, had an infield single in the seventh. And the curveball off the plate for ball one. Looks like Addison Reed is getting loose for the Mets. Levins worked in the opening game of this series, worked a 1 2 3 eighth. And then Reed trying to get ready in a bit of a hurry. Might bring him in to face Wainwright if it comes to that. <laughs> And that's lined into center field, a base hit for Sierra. Martinez scores, Fryer right behind him. It's a two run single for Magnary Sierra, his third hit of the day. And now it's seven to three, New York. Interesting that he threw him a fastball, Ron, a young hitter. And he tries to get ahead with a fastball. Interesting. Hmm. For a 21 year old up from double A, he's been pretty impressive. Yes, he has. And uh, starting to get interesting here. Well, again, Mike Matheny took out three of his regulars midway through this game with the Mets up seven to nothing. He sat Molina, Carpenter, and Fowler, and that's left him without any more bench. So he's got Adam Wainwright to pinch hit. Wainwright has had a very good year at the plate. Remember, 18 RBIs last year, 10 more this year. And five for 12 with runners in scoring position, and he's five for 19 in his career as a pinch hitter. So he's done this before, and he's done it successfully. Seven to three now with two on and two out. Well, even if he goes to the bridge, folks, the bridge means a home run. Uh, he's not going to beat you. So let's go. Put an end to this mess. Well, you got a power hitter on deck in Luke Voigt, so if Wainwright can find his way on, Voigt would come up as the tying run. Oh, oh. almost fell over. Swinging at that fastball, one and one. Two straight hits against Blevins by two left hand hitters. And now Wainwright fouls off the fastball and it's one and two and Terry's not messing around. I think he's got to drop the hammer on him here. One and two. I mean he's a little closer on that fastball than you like huh Keith. So. Cripple him with a curve. One two. Curve ball. Oh. 
Well, he wanted the call, didn't get it from David Rackley, and it's two and two. Just probably curved just around the outside corner. Yes, good call. Rackley's had a good game behind there, by the way. You don't mention the home plate umpire's name because he's having a good game. Two runs home in the inning, two out, two on, two and two to Wainwright. Good eye. And now a full count. So Wong and Sierra will be in motion. Both have great speed. Three two to Wainwright. And he fouls back that fastball with a pretty good cut. Levin so dominant over the first two and a half months of the season. But lately, not quite as effective. Yeah, now trying to work himself out of a tight spot. Mm. Feeling like Rick Camp. Too early. Okay. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming to win, right? And he walked him. And the Cardinals will get the tying run to bat. Levins has faced three hitters, two singles, and a walk. Mm. And that's going to be the end of his tenure. And Addison Reed will come in now for a potential four out save. And again, the Mets once led seven to nothing. It's seven to three, and the Cardinals have the bases loaded. And Terry Collins is going to get his closer into the game fourth with. Levins out re without retiring a batter. Seven three Mets. We'll be right back. Are any of them? Matt Bowman, a pitcher pinch running for a pitcher who pinch hit. 
And now Addison Reed on to try and get a four out save. I mean Blevins a line is two hits by left handers and a walk to the pinch hitting pitcher Wainwright and Reed here mm. to try to get the Mets out of trouble. And in to face a power hitter and Luke Voigt who's the tying run at the plate. Voigt up for the third time. Came on after Carpenter was pulled. Mid game he's grounded out and hit a long double to left. And he swings at the first pitch fastball and fouls it off. Voigt the eighth man up in the inning. It began with a couple of walks from Paul Seawald. He got two outs. Was pulled in favor of Blevins who was unable to slam the door. Now Wong at third Sierra at second and Bowman the pinch runner at first. In a game the Mets once led seven nothing. Boyd fouls it off and it's 0 2. You know the, the one thing you can't do and pardon the pun the cardinal sin from a bullpen when you're leading, leading by this many runs is the walks late in a game you can't do it. Three walks in the inning. Reed though quickly ahead 0 and 2 he hasn't pitched since Saturday so well rested for the possibility of getting four outs. And Voigt lifts one foul on the slider. This kid's really barrel chested. Yeah he's a big strong kid. He was a catcher earlier on in his career. They really didn't know what position he was going to play. Really was a non prospect but a St. Louis kid who made some noise quickly after being brought up. Again the 0 2 and he comes inside didn't mean to mm. one and two. He's got power to uh, the book on him. He's got power to all fields too. Addison Reed whose name has been prominently mentioned in possible trade talks free agent at the end of the year. One two coming struck him out got him with a slider Darno steps on the plate for the force that ends the inning. So Reed comes in, gets the first of what the Mets hope will be four outs. Picks up Levins, 7-3 Mets going to the bottom of the eighth. And you can get in on the eSports game right here on SNY with the Universal Open. You and a teammate have a chance to play live in the SNY studios in advance to the $100,000 grand final in LA. Sign up for the Universal Open today on faceit.com. Qualifiers start July 25th. Last of the eighth inning. That's with a 7 3 lead. Sung Juan O oh will come on to pitch for the Cardinals. What's his nickname, Gary? Got two, he's got two of them. Okay. He's the final boss. Final boss. But he's not anymore because he's not the closer. Anymore. Okay. And he's the Stone Buddha. Yeah. 
I like both. It's because he's been getting hammered. <laughs> I see what you're doing, Hammerstone. TJ Rivera off for the first time. Came in on a double switch in the seventh. TJ has been starting every day at third base, but he's 0 for 7 in this series. Need to get the Mets a cushion here in the bottom of the eighth. Already up seven to three. Oh, they've got a cushion. They've already got a cushion. Live ball out to right, chasing Martinez back onto the warning track to make the catch. One out. So one away now Michael Conforto who's one for four tonight. And Michael takes the breaking ball high ball one. Cardinal bullpen has been awfully good tonight. Mike Leake gave up all seven met runs in the first two innings. Bullpen's gone six and a third, allowed no runs, two hits. Conforto bloops one into shallow left, and Pham comes in to get it. And there are two out. So O quickly retires the first two, and now is Dribble Cabrera. Looking ahead to the ninth, Reed will get two, three, and four in the cardinal order. That means Pham, Martinez, and Jerko, and then Fryer, who took over for Molina, is the fourth man due up. Well, Matheny punted on this game early. He wants those uh, regulars ready for tomorrow's game, so they will have their A lineup out there tomorrow. I mean, it was seven to nothing, and he started pulling his starters in the fourth inning, yeah. which seemed a little early at that score. Cabrera muscles one into center field for a base hit, and that's a dribble's third hit of the night, a two-out single. We'll see tomorrow how effective it was. Right. 12 noon Wago tomorrow, bright and early. Now, are you going to be tuning in? I will be tuning in and out. I've got a 12:30 physical therapy, so that's my knee. That's that number one priority. Now. But he's a Met PT, George Wilson, my buddy. He's a Met fan. He'll have it on the tube. Okay, because you know if you. Had downloaded the NBC Sports app, you could. Uh, well, he's going to have the TV the there. Okay. And then I'll listen when I drive home. I'll listen to Howie and Josh. And then I don't know what I'm going to do at that point. <laughs> <laughs> See what the day brings. <laughs> Bruce grounds one weekly to Wong. And that'll do it for the bottom of the eighth. We head for the ninth as Keith considers his Thursday plans. Addison Reed plans to get three more outs. Mets up seven to three.
Ninth inning Addison Reed's gotten one out he needs three more Tommy Pham first man to face him. Pham's gone one for four tonight an infield hit in the fifth. Reed has three saves this year of four outs or more looking for another one tonight. And Pham fouls it away and quickly it's 0 and 2. Coming up tonight after the postgame show it's Geico Sports Night. Basketball news. Trade deadline news. Actual baseball news. What are we going to do if Carmelo gets traded? We won't have any news. Oh, they'll think of something. Huh? They'll think of something. I mean, every day it's Carmelo. I mean, the, maybe we'll have some defense. Oh, little dropped a little red Holtzman on us, huh? See the ball. Out to left center field, back in the gap, Cespedes. He gets there. One out. Two outs down for Addison Reed, two to go. And now Jose Martinez. Martinez, who toiled long in the minor leagues before getting a crack with the Cardinals. A few at bats last season, a few more this year. He began in the White Sox organization, Martinez did in 2006. Ten years in the minor leagues before he finally got his first crack last season. And then he was an underdog to make the team out of spring training, and he did it because we, boy, we saw his number in Jupiter, Port St. Lucie, all the time. His dad also played in the big leagues, also known as Jose Martinez, also played with the White Sox. Hmm. Also played with the Indians and the Angels back in the 90s. And Reed throwing nothing but strikes gets ahead of him 0 2. Martinez walked and scored in the eighth inning. In his only plate appearance. And he fouls this one away. You know, Reed has been in attack mode from the moment he came in this game. One of the few relief pitchers at the end of ball games that just gets it and throws it. No uh, histrionics between each pitch. No pitch clock necessary. No. O2. Mm -hmm. On the outside corner, got him looking. Two men down. Reed has faced three and retired three. Two strikeouts, one more out to get. Right on the black. Yep. So well, there's no more black on the home plate. The proverbial black. Yes. The institutional black. Frackley's a good umpire, good young umpire. We're going to keep a walk, an eye on him. So the Cardinals are down to their final out. Jed Jerko is 0 for 4 tonight, and he hits the first pitch foul. Noon time start tomorrow for the final game of this four game series. Ground ball toward the middle and Jerko keeps this one alive with a two out hit. First hit against Reed the tenth of the night for the Cardinals. And that gets Eric Fryer another chance. Fryer's had two plate appearances as he came on for Molina in the fourth inning. Took a call third strike in the sixth walked and scored in the eighth. Rivera playing first base playing behind Jerko. And a broken back grounder Cabrera gets over in front of it and the ball game is open. Addison Reed with the four out save Jacob DeGrom wins his seventh consecutive start. Yoenna Cespedes with a couple of RBIs early as the Mets score seven in the first two innings and beat the Cardinals seven to three. Well really that's what you need right you need your ace of your staff to stop the bleeding and that is what DeGrom has done each and every day coming into the season the Mets thought that every day would be covered by a great pitcher. Well on DeGrom's day they are covered and ironically a game without a home run and the Mets score early and often uh, what they have done this homestand in their three wins they've scored early they got off to an early start seven nothing uh, a win they had to have game summary presented by the New York lottery Mike Leake 
Lasted just two innings. Mets scored seven runs against him. He was betrayed a bit by his defense as well. DeGrom wasn't feeling great early, but didn't give up a run until two out in the seventh. And the Mets get him his seventh straight win in seven starts as they win this game seven to three. For every Mets win, the Mets organization is proud to contribute $2,500 to Northwell Health and the Cats Institute for Women's Health. For more information, visit northwell.edu slash cats. This win brings the total contribution so far this season to $105,000. Every Mets win this year means another opportunity to win amazing prizes from Delta Airlines. Go to sny.tv slash Delta Dugout to sign up now. So the Mets win this game 7 to 3 and we enjoy an evening of alfresco up in the <laughs> promenade. I, I would love to spend every summer night up here. Um, I can sprinkle in a few gear, not all the time. It's a little <laughs> little muggy up here, but <laughs> it's always great to be up here. Uh, it's I love the view. Uh, it's a different perspective for us and it also brought a W for your Metsies. And uh, I think what was fun is just Hearing the comments, some good, most good, some bad. Um, it's uh, from the fans. I think it's a great, uh, a great venue. Al Fresco, you said, Gary, I could do it every day. As long as they bring us the pork belly buns oh. from Bauhaus, uh, I don't care where we do the games. <laughs> I'll be very happy. Good night for Cespedes and the Mets as they beat the Cardinals seven to three to snap a three-game losing streak. More from City Field coming up. <laughs> 